I'd like to build a world and you can't furnish it with love Grow mushroom trees and atomic bees and quantum All right. <clears throat> well, we're going to be discussing some fallout today, and I guess by we, I mean myself. Uh, how's everyone doing out there? I hope you all are having a wonderful Easter Sunday, and I uh, hope that uh, everything is uh, to your liking. Uh, we are celebrating the, uh, you know, the rise of the Savior, so that's always a good thing. But we're going to discuss a little fallout today, and again, if anybody is interested and wants to come up here and discuss your favorite game, uh, your favorite moments of the game, some of the lore, uh, you know, how how much we're dreading the Amazon show, then then please just send me a message over there on Twitter X, and I will send you a link uh, momentarily. So in the meantime, I suppose I'll just sing a few uh, tunes <laughs> from the game and, and just interact with the chat until we get some people in here. So this is kind of sort of a diet matinee now, <laughs> which I'm perfectly fine with. I think I can sing, even though I've been growling into the mic, uh, doing a voice for a particular secret project that I hope you guys will uh, be able to identify later on within the week. <clears throat> so uh, this song, while not officially part of the Fallout soundtrack roster, is a song that often akins me to Fallout. And again, uh, I will just matinee this out and, and, you know, and do some bits and whatnot and just, you know, hang out with you all. If, uh, I, I mean, Snail Messiah was supposed to, to be here. I sent out an invite to Dog Meat as well. And if anybody wants to come up here and just discuss the universe, the games, or the or the uh, universe they're in, uh, or, or, or the dreaded series coming out on Amazon, please do not hesitate to reach out. Um, hopefully, uh, you all in, are having, a, again, a great Easter. So let's go ahead and get right to it. This song is by the Crown City 4. It is a civil defense spot song. It's a really good one. <clears throat> and again, I apologize in advance if my voice is a little cracking, but I guess that just goes with the Nixie Tube uh, aesthetic of, of vintage radio that, uh, you know, that overall culture that uh, Fallout has brought us so well, you know, brought to us so well. So let's go ahead and uh, clean out the pipes a little bit. And uh, I guess we'll just make this kind of sort of a matinee. I was hoping for a reactor side chat, but, you know, that's perfectly fine. Uh, got some good news as well. Uh, Monday and Tuesday, I'm also free from work. Uh, that can also be a catch-22, seeing as we ran out of work. Um, they did not ship enough of uh, work to us in time to process, so we're out until uh, Wednesday. So that means I can be on YouTube a little bit more. Uh, these next couple of days, and I will have a full matinee, just to start Saturday matinee, but on a Monday or Tuesday, running at primetime hours, so at 8.30 Eastern to like 2 or 3 in the morning. I have yet to decide which day that's going to fall on. And we are also going to have, later on tonight, the Tower After Hours interview of Anti-Derivative Jill, and uh, that I'm looking forward to uh, discussing her, uh, her foray into YouTube and and how she got part of the community and stuff like that. So that's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll see you for that hour uh, later on tonight at 11 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard, both on YouTube and Rumble. So without further ado, <clears throat> World War III on pay TV. Watch World War III on pay TV. 
Television can be such a thrill. Sitting home in your chair, watch the boys over there. Charging across your TV screen, getting blown to smithereens. Watch World War Three on pay TV. If you want to keep the kids at home, they'll be glued to their sets, watching rockets and jets. Blowing up schools and factories, putting an end to the birds and bees. It's worth every penny to tune in and see. Hum, bum, bum. Who wins the Emmy at the ruins of the Academy? Watch World War III on pay TV before your television melts away. Think of the close-ups on your screen. Find a face you know. Isn't this better than Bishop Sheen? Better than The Late Late Show? Watch the boys from your hometown fighting wherever they are. Watching the cities falling down. It's greater than Jack Parr. Oh, bah, 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 bah. They're out setting up the cameras now. Though they don't know just where, still they've got to prepare. Burroughs there to do his part, waiting for the war to start. Bum, 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 bum. See the hydrogen bomb explode. As those mushrooms appear, you'll be sipping your beer. Zooming in with a Zoomar lens, watching while the whole world ends. It's worth every penny to tune in and see who wins the Emmy at the ruins of the Academy. Watch World War Three on pay TV before your television melts away. Before your television melts away. <laughs> I love this song. It's one of my favorite songs. And uh, that's actually a song that was added uh, by uh, the Old World Radio mod and uh, the extended radio mods that uh, both uh, Brandon Redding and uh, Atomic Wolf uh, respectively done for the, the two best radio mods of Fallout out there is, is you know, Atomic Wolf and uh, Old World Radio Boston. And I discovered a lot of these tunes uh, with those mods. <clears throat> but in the meantime, let me double check and see if we got some massages i wonder if snail's okay snail is going through a lot he lost a friend and may not be available so that's perfectly fine if we just vamp this for an hour or a few minutes we'll vamp this for an hour or a few minutes it's no big deal to me well i'm glad that you're hanging out with us tonight uh pirate dark tiny uh sci-fi mombi it's good to see you and if you want uh, jeff white it's also good to see you welcome guys I hope you guys are having a, a wonderful uh, Easter today. So let's just uh, keep the tunes rolling and uh, and uh, just have fun today. If this is a mini matinee uh, that's Fallout centric, then then uh, that's perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and sing another song. This one's from New uh, featured, not from, but featured on New Vegas. Uh, Flash Bam Ala Kazam uh, by Nat King Cole. And uh, this is one of my favorite ones here. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> I was walking along, minding my business, when out of an orange colored sky, Flash. Bam, Alakazam, wonderful you came by. I was humming a tune, drinking in sunshine, went out of an orange-colored view. Flash, bam, Alakazam, I got a look at you. One look and I yelled, Timber! Watch out for flying glass. Cause the ceiling fell in and the bottom fell out. And I went in a spin and I started a shot. I've been hit. This is it. This is it. I've been hit. I was walking along, minding my business. When love came and hit me in the eye. Flash, bam, alakazam. Out of an orange colored sky. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Oh, one look and I yelled, Timber, watch out for flying glass. Cause the ceiling fell in and the bottom fell out and I went in a spin and I started a shot. I've been hit. This is it. This is it. He's been hit. 
I was walking along, minding my business, when love came and hit me in the eye. Flash, bam, alakazam, out of an orange colored purple stripe, pretty green polka dot sky. Flash, bam, alakazam, and goodbye. Wow, I thought love was so much softer than that. What a most disturbing sound. There we go. There we go. Talking a little fallout. Now we got some people piling in here. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So I guess we should just go ahead and start doing a little bit of uh, what fallout really is and why it's touched not one but two generations of gamers and geeks alike. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab myself a little uh, Nuka-Cola over here. And maybe put a, just a tad bit of, uh, I don't know, slum or something in there. Just a wee bit. Who knows? Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Now, where'd I put it? Ow, yeah. A little bit of that radioactive kitten. Mm -hmm. My cats are also saying hello as well. Yes, yes, yes. And again, uh... I wonder where Snail is. Hope he's okay. I know that he's uh, dealing with a loss. And it is Easter. So I don't expect any kind of like knockout reception. But I appreciate you guys that are already here. And again, I would like for people to know a little bit about Fallout. Or have a little bit of a projection for the Amazon show as this is attended to be a reactor side chat. But uh, right now it's kind of a diet matinee. So three matinees in one week. Uh, I'm, you know, not too worried about it. Uh, Dogmeat has just confirmed that he will not be able to make this fallout reactor side chat. So that is perfectly uh, okay. And uh, Saber also is unable to make it, but it is good that you uh, swung by. I guess we'll just make this a diet matinee that is fallout centric. So for those of you who don't know about Fallout, you have to uh, you have to first accept that it is an alternate history that goes into the future. So uh, in context, the first thing that's different from our timeline and reality in this uh, timeline is the transistor, a very key element in modern electronics and the step into digital technology. Uh, the transistor was never invented. It was never thought of. It was never. It was never conceived. So, uh, sometime at around the 40s, uh, it diverges from World War II. Uh, the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, as was in our timeline. But instead of the integration into modern electronics and the continuation of our society, things became stagnant. So. The world continued to fight for oil and for gasoline, petrol. And China became the communist superpower over Russia. So there was no Soviet Union, per se. Uh, what happened was is that China became the communist element. And as they started to absorb nation after nation in Asia you know, they started to grow as the second superpower. They saw the launch of the weapons, of the nukes, as, as a sign of this is a new age, an age of atomics. And in America, our society became quite stagnant culturally, but in a lot of ways it was the same, but in ways that were different. Uh, as time progressed, we stuck into that, white picket fence kind of society nuclear family hello suzanne how you doing today a nuclear family kind of element you know a dad a mom two kids you know two cars in the garage driving to work you know but as our technology grew it grew with that westminster refrigerator uh you know general electric radio look that chrome look Cars still had fins on the back. Society still kind of was in a Red Scare 50s. And the push against communism was part of a government incentive 
to keep America, for lack of a better word, Americanized. And so racial tension in America became non-existent. So if you were African-American or, or white, you, you, it didn't matter. You were American. Americans were Americans. If you were American, you were treated with the same due diligence and respect as any other American by the year 2000 despite everything being still essentially culturally, for lack of a better word, everything else was still in the 50s and 60s. And as this progressed, we started to work, uh, and again, this is with analog direct, direct current electronics. So big, big, massive power coils, you know, wires hanging out, you know, very analog circuits. Like if you ever take the back off of an old radio and you just see how all of those wires are duct taped in there to the back, to the wood, and you know, and soldered in, that kind of technology stuck around. But then it was refined with atomics. So we started to really master the atom. So you had flying robots hovering on a jet of like heat, the Mr. Handy that had a buzz saw and hedge clippers and could pour your coffee for you. You know, you're sitting there at the table, you know, mom's, you know, finishing the eggs, but the robot will grab the plate and put it on the table and be like, there you go, sir. There you go, madam. You know, and like, just like the divergent of our technology and the 50s society created this, massive suburbia like America. And it was very profitable. But of course, inflation started getting higher because a lot of things were still running on gasoline. And this is where the nuclear tension starts coming in. So at the cusp of 2030, uh, the, the resource wars begins. And at this point, the communist nation of China has pretty much absorbed all of Asia, 90% of Europe, they're all under this banner, and they're just taking up every can of oil that they can. And they and they eventually, as the Third World War broke out, seized Alaska. For a time, Alaska was under Chinese control. Uh, they took the city of Anchorage almost overnight in a massive amphibious land invasion that was unprecedented and unseen and it started basically the the beginning of world war three uh america at this time was working on atomics to the point to where we had military might through armor so if you notice my avatar here has it's a very similar fallout-esque power armor that runs on a fusion core fusion battery and the t-150b was deployed to retake anchorage uh, I think in 2069, and there was they were walking on the bottom of the ocean and marched up on the shore with Gatling lasers and plasma weapons, all powered by the atom. And the, the Chinese was swiftly defeated because we had researched a new age of atomic energy and atomic warfare that had not been ever foreseen. And... That was to lead to the nuclear annihilation of the planet just under a decade later. And what's unfortunate is there was companies that was exploiting this, that was anticipating this. There were economic and anthropological geniuses. There were think tanks that were held out of the public eye that were going, okay, there will have, there's going to be no choice. There are the nukes are going to launch. Everybody is going to die. How do we, how do we prepare for the future? And a little company called Vault Tech popped up. Now, Vault Tech had its hands in just about anything. If you remember the movie, uh, uh, Doctor Strange Love, the scene "Don't fuck with the new the Coca Cola Corporation." Vault Tech and Nuka Cola had their hands in just about everything. Hello, Mister House Party Six. How you doing today? So they, they have everything under control, and they they're moving the pieces outside of the public eye. And 
while the Chinese was developing stealth technology in that last 10 years and preparing to use infiltration techniques and espionage, Voltec was going, okay, guys, nukes could fly at any moment. Hello, Voltec calling. You've been selected for your services in the military to be interred into one of our vaults. That's right. If the bombs fly, you'll be safe. And what a vault was, it is basically an underground shelter that is so far underground and so well fortified that it can withstand a direct hit. Like, you could have a direct hit of a nuclear weapon go off right next to the hill that your vault is under, and that blast wave is not knocking that door down. They guaranteed it. They ensured that that was a guarantee, that if you was in a vault, you was not going to be killed when the bombs flew. And so, you know, and then there was Nuka-Cola trying to sell their soda because the Nuka-Cola Quantum Isotope, the glowing bottle of soda, is also a weaponized isotope. And a, a parody of the two heads of Pepsi and Coca-Cola, John Bradburton, a John Henry Bradburton, what had his hand in developing a mini nuke variant called the Nuka Launcher. Hey, Hiawatha, good to see you, Ship. How you doing? Uh, you want, do you know? Uh, do you know a lot about Fallout? Would you like to come up and talk about it? We're just getting to the part where uh, the bombs are flying, and then I'm going to take a break from that and sing another song. Let me know if you want a link. Send, send me a link on the Twitter. Um, but yeah, you know, so all of this happens. All of this happens at the cusp of the nukes going off. But Vault Tech, much like Nuka Cola, had their own agendas, and they were very sinister. Vault Tech uh, seemed to have a niche for wanting to conduct very cruel black and white social experiments in their shelters. And so much of vault Tech shelters uh, were actually just closed environments for, for, okay, what if we just, what if we just had like subliminal messages going over the intercom and making people go insane one of the facilities was a cloning area where they just cloned the same one person that was it was a vault that was meant to fully house their full capacity of people but only one person was in there and then they cloned him over and over and over again and with each new clone that clone was degenerative in his in his mind over and over and over and over again. And then you had another vault that was working on plant-based biotech that was, you know, that eventually just like overgrew the vault. Like all of these different things were horrible. They had a vault where they elected a new overseer every year. And the person that lost the election was killed was summarily executed to force this expedited form of democracy onto prospective overseer year after year after year there's a vault and this is not a canon vault but uh shout out to um the guys behind nuka break uh which i will compare the uh, amazon show coming out to to uh what fans do there's a vault uh in Nuka Break, where the food supplementation of the residents of this vault was just like fancy lad snack cakes, Nuka Colas, uh, you know, all sweets and candies and junk food, and the they, everybody in this fat and in this vault was basically fat. And if you were the skinniest in the vault, their society would laugh at you. You're like, well, you're 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 skinny, and you know. So over the 200 years that they were underground, they created this society where the bigger and un more unhealthy you were, the higher you were on the totem pole. And so, you know, it's just like all these different things was happening. And, you know, vault -Tec knew the nukes were going to hit. And they wanted to do this crap. So 
there were some sick birds going on behind the scenes in Vault Tech, as was Nuka Cola. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna sing another song, and um, and we're gonna see if anybody is uh, down to discuss Fallout with us. If not, and then this is just the diet matinee. And I honestly don't mind doing this today for you all. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Hail to Jason Love and Ray Lucard, who just entered the chat. It's good to see you guys. All right. So let's do another tune. Um, let's do uh, let's do another one that is feature on New Vegas. And we'll 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 uh, we'll get into more of those details later. All right. This one is by Dino, and it goes a little bit like this. Hail to Radioactive. Do you know your way around Fallout? I wouldn't mind having somebody with that name on the, on, on the screen. <laughs> Let me know. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sing a little Dino for you all. <clears throat> How lucky can one guy be? I kissed her and she kissed me, like the fellow once said, ain't that a kick in the head? The room was completely black, I hugged her and she hugged back, like the sailor said, quote, ain't that a hole in the boat? My head keeps spinning, I go to sleep and keep grinning if this is just the beginning my life is gonna be beautiful i've sunshine enough to spread it's just like the fella said tell me quick ain't love a kick in the head da -dum -ba -dum -ba -da -dum. Da -dum -da -dum -da -dum. Like the fellow once said, ain't love a kick in the head. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -da. Da -da 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 like the sailor said, quote, ain't that a hole in the bone? My head keeps spinning. I go to sleep and keep grinning. If this is just the be Again, and my life is going to be beautiful. She's telling me we'll be wed. She's picked out a king-size bed. I couldn't feel any better. I'd be sick. Tell me quick. Oh, I love a kid. Tell me quick. Ain't love a kick. In the head. Da, 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 ba, 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 da. There we go. Low spec Linux laptop. Hail to you, sir. He says, have you checked out the Atom RPG? It's like a love letter to classic Fallout. I know that Fallout has some tabletop RPGs, but I will definitely give that a good gander. A little good gander. What's good for the what's good for the goose is definitely good for the gander. Ain't that right, folks? We got uh Radioactive says, I haven't played the Fallout series, but now that you mention it, I am willing to learn. Oh, dude, 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 go back to the beginning. I just did a little bit of the exposition of how things end up going. Uh, to uh, We're about ready to discuss the Great War in itself, when the nukes fly, and what happens after that directly. And, uh, yeah, so while a lot of the vaults in Vault Tech were used as means for social experiments. A few vaults uh, were actually meant to be legitimate fallout shelters for people to basically rebuild, to rebuild America. Uh, canonically, uh, with the newest edition being Vault 76, but uh, just a few vaults to mention. Vault 13, uh, located in the southwest. Uh, one moment, guys. One second. There you go. There you go. 
go, sweetie. Now you got some water. Sorry, the cats needed water. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> so people get piled into the fallout shelters, and a few of them are uh, are actually legitimately shelters meant to uh, withstand the forthcoming nuclear event and rebuild the world. And these shelters are include Vault 13 in the southwest between California and Nevada. And that, that, in fact, is actually the first vault that is featured in the series of games. That is the first Fallout. And then there are other vaults on the east, such as Vault 101, uh, located right outside of D.C. And Vault 111, located in Massachusetts. But, you know, they're spread throughout. There's one that's in West Virginia. Vault 76 uh, is essentially kind of sort of like, it's canonically accepted, even though... The game itself, Fallout 76, is very much more of an online, uh, you know, MMO, RPG, you know, co-op raid thing. But, I mean, there's some lore that does check out. They actually, like, when the game originally released, there was a lot of, like, contradictory lore stuff going on. Uh, but we could get in a little bit about that whenever we discuss, uh, because I'm going to want to separate these reactor side chats up into, like, segments, like... I don't want to get into too much detail about the Brotherhood of Steel or the FEV or or all of that stuff. I want to separate those out into other streams so that I have some evergreen content about Fallout, as well as to get some people to discuss this in detail. You know, so we won't be going into the Maxon family bloodline. We won't be going into any of that today. We're just doing the general overview uh, today of what happens all the way up to the beginning of the wasteland era of post-nuclear uh, America. <sighs> but, back to the topic at hand. Um, so, you know, these vaults finally start to bring people out. And one of the uh, revolutionary technologies that vault Tech created is called the Garden of Eden Creation Kit, or GEC for short was a little suitcase that had within it a series of uh, isodine, uh, rad-removing, rodentin-absorbing um, chemicals, as well as purifying agents. Uh, yes, I, I know. I still I have to I have to have a machine to play it radioactive. I need a machine to play it. That's my biggest concern, as well as a stable enough internet connection to where I don't lag out the party. I am interested in hell diving. So the, the Garden of Eden, if I could speak today, the Garden of Eden creation kit, or the GEC, was created to basically purify soil, purify water. Uh, it would come also with packs of seeds, uncorrupted, uh, un, uh, not irradiated seeds of corn, you know, apples, just what, you know, an assortment of stuff to start regrowing and repopulating the world. And so this thing... Um, is capable of just removing all forms of gamma radiation from whatever it touches. It has everything inside needed to build a settlement and to start rebuilding America. And in the first game, uh, that's basically what uh, the uh, Wastelander, the first, uh, the true survivor, the first survivor was sent out to do. Uh, the Vault Overseer sent him out of Vault 13 on a quest to basically say, hey, look, our water purifier is going out. We've used up our GEC. You need to get another purifier or another GEC and bring it back. And so that whole game is centered around you finding a water purifier module or a GEC and bringing it back to the vault to uh, save the uh, population inside because these people are very content with just living out their lives inside the vault. The Gek. I've run into those guys occasionally in No Man's Sky. No, the the Gek. That. That's the that's the Gek I'm talking about. <clears throat> Garden of Eden Fish. Okay. So 200 years passes. Now, in order to understand why, yet yeah, the water chip, yep. Yeah, the water purifier chip. The Gek, I think, is in Fallout 2. Now I'm thinking about it. Because that's how, that's how the NCR starts. 
but uh yes uh yeah that's the gag yeah you're right you're right sorry about that um skip skipping ahead thank you low spec uh so anyway the yeah it's a water purifier chip in the first one but 200 years have passed after the nukes fly and so the wasteland is basically that and for lack of the better word uh, one would assume that the entire world has been uh, sent back into the Stone Age. Now, one thing to understand is is the yield. Let's go into a little bit of the science of the atomic yield of what these weapons did at the end and why things are still so irradiated. Now, uh, the modern, um, you know, legacy nuke has a massive yield. Its mushroom cloud goes all the way up into the stratosphere, troposphere, even sometimes. And it it's it's basically, you know, it's fallout is much more evenly distributed over the air and over the jet stream and can reach out further, but it's not going to stick around as long as 200 years. Why everything is still so tightly irradiated and there's still so much strontium-90 in the soil is because the weapons from the Fallout universe are just larger versions of atomic weapons. They never went thermonuclear with it. They never introduced hydrogen into their weapons. And so plutonium was never a thing. Everything still detonated with an uranium charge, U-238 unstable charge, and a neutron bombardment uh, mechanism. And they did perfect the potential yield to, you know, a megaton here and a megaton there with the weapons, you know, but it was still, still in varying degrees of kilotons that these weapons operated on. And so the reason why things are so tightly irradiated is those mushroom clouds didn't go up as far. The radioactive debris was more tightly packed, but also because most of any general appliance, an automobile at this point, also had a little sliver of uranium or radioactive material powering the thing. Your alarm clock had a nuclear battery in it. Your family car ran on nuclear batteries. There, you know, there were some people that still had gas-powered cars at this point, but because the resource wars was so tight, people rushed towards nuclear in America. And so most gas stations had a third option. You had regular, you had unleaded, diesel, and then you had coolant by the gallon. So you would actually go through your gas station, and if you were in a nuclear car, you were buying coolant through a hose. And not and not and not petrol. So all of these things combine to make a very toxic two hundred year later scenario. It is it is still very hot everywhere you go, and the unrealistic levels of radiation. If we as regular people were there, would die immediately. Like we would feel a warm breeze and perish because we can only take about 10 rotogens of radioactivity throughout our lifespan before our cells start going, Hey, how do I, how do I do this? How do I work? And we fa and our bodies just fall apart set on the cellular level. But if in the game, as you know, they measure it in rads and your Geiger, your Geiger counters going up and you're like, tick, 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 tick. And you know, Lethal radioactivity is at a thousand rads. So, you know, these people, it's toxic and not wait for it radioactive. It's to It's radioactive by default, but you know, you know what I mean? Like it's very, it's very, it's very hot anywhere you go. And so as you play through Fallout, you know, your, your average human in Fallout is able to take so much radiation, like, like say for example the demon core event right like if if somebody from a vault who was just from a generation of atomic era humans from this fallout world this this alternate history who just 
for some odd reason was able to adapt to the radiation to just the radiation coming out of your alarm clock and in your car right you know and like if they were at the demon core of it and that screwdriver slip and that beryllium cap hit it you know and they would be like wow i got a tan <laughs> like that, that that's like the difference it's like literally the difference between like how weak we are to radiation in real life and how how you know it, radioactive everything still is 200 years later from this collective concentrated fallout and like you know it's just ridiculous and so you have to like you have to like suspend of disbelief when you play these games but also it's just another nod to that retro futuristic society that it is where you know it's like science fiction amazing tales levels of you know robotics and uh, you know the mastery of the atom you know yes yes fun fact rad or radiation absorbed dose is dependent on the material that is absorbing the radiation very true but most of the uh, radioactive materials that you find in fallout and under my assumption would be strontium 90 or worse um so <laughs> gross stuff really gross stuff and um but you know it's like the giant insects that you find in fallout the mutants and the abominations and the monsters the forced evolutionary uh strains of mutants all this stuff is just a callback to like the 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 the, the science fiction tales of tomorrow magazines that you used to get when you were a kid Example of rad uh, SI is not the same as rad H2O. Yep. Silicone and uh, water are totally, to, 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 totally two different things um, of how they would accept uh, radioactive material, which is ironically enough because the water everywhere you go. I mean, there was a game that was entirely uh, dedicated to water filtration on a mass scale uh, where in Fallout 3, uh, your character ends up basically playing a part in clearing out a good chunk of the Potomac by the Jefferson Memorial. Like you, you, Project Purity is a massive water purifier that needed a GEC to operate. And um, because the water, obviously, with all of these like low yield, you know, low, low hanging mushroom clouds, just dumped all that stuff into the water and water takes a lot longer to, to diffuse radioactivity than, than solids or gases, you know? <sighs> but yeah, you know, so there's an entire game dedicated towards that because you know that the capital would have gotten hit multiple times and it did many chinese bombs i mean there is no white house like whenever whenever i played fallout 3 for the first time and they said oh by the way you discovered the location the lighthouse of course the map on your pit boy is going to try and correlate to uh to the world before and it's referencing those atlases and that data this is you've discovered the location of the White House. I turn around and I look and I just see like this big sunken bit of debris and like a jet fighter sticking out of it. And I'm like, oh, so that's what happened. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah, water is, at best is acts as a moderator specifically for fast neutrons. And they don't get much faster than uh, gamma radiation from uh, U-238. Um, but yeah, so, you know, you, white house is plowed through. I thought it was hilarious that the congressional building suffered minimal damage, but the white house was gone. But then again, I'm not too surprised. The government was a lot different in the, uh, fallout series than it was in, uh, in our, in our reality, in our timeline. So I suppose it's time for another tune. You guys say about that sing another tune and i hope that snail messiah is all right he was supposed to 
co-host us with us today. But again, he's he is suffering the loss of a good friend. So I, I sent him a message, but got no reply, and I hope he's okay. So let's go ahead and do another tune. Since we're now on to the subject of uh, radioactivity and uranium specifically. Let's do a little bit of uh, that uranium fever. How about that? <clears throat> Photons, not neutrons. Yes, my bad. My bad. Uh, so anyway... <clears throat> Yeah, gamma radiation is more of a wave rather than actual entropy. My apologies. So let's go ahead and do this song, Raw Chip. Well, I don't know, but I've been told uranium ore is worth more than gold. Sold my cat, I bought me a Jeep, I got that bug, and I can't sleep. Uranium fever has done and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all around. With a Geiger counter in my hand, I'm going to stake me some government land. Uranium fever has gone and got me down. Well, I had a talk with the AEC, and they bought out some maps that looked good to me, and one showed me a spot he had known, and I straddled my Jeep and headed down the road. I reckon I drove about 100 miles down a bumpy road out through the wilds, when all of a sudden I bounced to a stop at the foot of the mountain, didn't have no top. Uranium fever has done and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all around. With a Geiger counter in my hand, I'm going to stake me some government. Uranium fever is done and got me down. Well, I took my Geiger and I started to climb right up to the top where I thought I'd find a hunk of rock that would make it click just like I read about Vernon Pick. On the second day, I made it to the top, and I'm telling you, Steve, I was ready to stop. The only clicking I heard that day was the bones on my back that had gone astray. Uranium fever has done and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all around. With a Geiger counter in my hand, I'm going to stake me some government land. Uranium fever is done and got me down. Well, you pack up your things, you head out again into the unknown spot where nobody's been. You reach the spot where your fortune lies. You find it's been staked by 17 other guys. Well, I ain't kidding. I ain't going to quit. That bug stunt caught me, and I've been bit. So with a Geiger counter and a pick of my hand, I keep up staking that government land. Uranium fever has done and got me down. Uranium fever is spreading all around. With a Geiger counter in my hand, I'm going to stake me some government land. Uranium fever is done and got me down. Bum, bum. Dark Helmet. Sibling the OJ and has no clue what he's talking about. See, so you never played Fallout either? Wow. Wow. So many people have missed out on such a good game. Such a good universe. I really wish there was more books about it. Because the what you know, with the with the premise behind it just being tales of interest and science fiction tales and all that stuff, like you know, you would think that they would have like this appeal. I've heard of it, but never played it, Dark Helmet. Ah, oh, I see, I see. It's a fun experience, and and to be honest, I might I might do a playthrough uh, on this channel at some point. Just Start with uh, start with the prologue of Fallout Four, and then play through the other games. Try to make it as it, it, as much as, in continuity as possible. Just do like a timeline of different characters in each different game for you all at some point. That's something I might do. Just 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 so that you guys can get a, get a glimpse. Pirate Dark Tynave goes on to say, "I haven't played Fallout due to it being an Xbox." on Xbox due to money restrictions. Oh, wow. So there are a lot of people here that need to be introduced to the, the world of Fallout. Well, let me check and see what I got here. Because I tell you what, it may be coming out a bit bad, but we could probably... see what we can do to get this going 
All right, if you guys will give me a little bit, I'll go ahead and I'll plug in my OBS, and we'll see if we can't get this game going for you all. Let's just... Maybe I need to update my Fallout 4. I'm not sure, but we'll give it we'll give it a good poke. Low Spec says he's in Junk Town in Fallout 1. Been a few weeks since I posted a vid. Ah! Oh. Hmm. Do I have Fallout 1... I have it on a disc somewhere. Okay, so the next time I do this, or I might just add another gaming series alongside Avengers Skyrim, we're, we're going to go through Fallout for you all. And um, that way you guys can get a little bit of more coverage on it. I know some people don't like the Let's Plays. They don't like just sitting and watching. But, of course, what I like to do when I do these Fallout games or like with Skyrim is just add in-character commentary or discuss you know, what the mod list is doing. So I'm still engaging with you all with my chat because I like to set them as live premieres. And I apologize for my neighbor's dogs. I know you guys are probably hearing them too. They're, they're yapping on the other side of the wall here. I really need to move my studio to the other side of the apartment. <clears throat> but anyway, let's continue with uh, the lore. I think we're now to the part basically post-war. I kind of just want to start this now. Is my Xbox on? Let's see here. Let me plug this up right quick. Uh, in the meantime, the stream was brought to you by Vault Tech and Nuka Cola. So, what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play uh, a commercial break. We'll be right after write these messages and I'll see if I can't get. Uh, might be a little laggy because of my uh, hotspot connection, but we're going to give it a poke. We're going to give a fair shake for you all today. How about that? Sound good to you all? So uh, after these messages, we'll be right back. I'd like to build a world and you can furnish it with love. Grow mushroom trees and atomic bees and quantum colored I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. Perfect harmony. I'd like to buy the world to you and keep it company. It's the real thing. Good. What the world wants today. Luca Cola. Are you bored? Do you find yourself with nothing to do, wondering what can add some excitement to your life? Well, have you considered models? And we're not talking about any old models, no sir. We're talking about awesome models, not these models, or these. No, we're talking about science, science fiction, fiction models. models. That's right, you heard correctly. Science fiction models, you know, the plastic kind that snap or glue together. Things like Star Trek, Star Wars, Transformers, Back to the Future, UFO stuff, more Star Trek, more Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica, both kinds. Well, if you like those things, come on over to the Sci-Fi Model Guy. Just point your internet browser to https colon forward slash forward slash www.youtube.com forward slash ampersand the sci-fi model guy and not only will you be able to see cool models being made but you get to hear this guy explain all about them you have nothing to lose and so much to gain so come on over and let's get modeling Come on to the Sci-Fi Model Guy today! So much to gain varies by user. Critics agree there is only one human movie that can be considered a masterpiece. Robocop. And now it's available on EPROM. 
download your copy at a replicator near you. Relive the excitement and glory of a human being transformed into a glorious, gleaming, killing machine. Act now and receive at no extra charge. Dozers and dump trucks, a fond look back at our primitive ancestors. Robocop, Dozers and Dump Trucks, two great programs, one low price. Make them a permanent part of your hard drive today. I'd like to build a world and you can't furnish it with love. Grow mushroom trees and atomic bees and quantum calendars. Ah, whoops. All right. It was still on loop. Okay. I believe now, now we can go ahead and to do the thing. Is the Robocop audio mod? No. <laughs> That was a radio station I took from a game called Tiny Tank on the PlayStation. Okay, so let's see if we can get this bad boy a rolling for you all. And uh, there we are. And we'll just go ahead and we will. Do that for you all. Okay. All righty. All right. Do we have... How laggy is it from your end? If you guys could give me... How laggy is my cursor on your end? Is it smooth? Is there a little bit... Of, I know there's a little bit of frame rate drop on my side. We're good. We're in the fight. Five by five. Uh, excellent. 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 All right. So let's close out of anything else that could be using the internet. Smooth as silk. All right. Uh, I do expect a bit of a frame rate drop. I do expect that. So just because I know that the Xbox is not connected to any internet. Okay, monitor. My monitor's flickering. I hope I don't suffer any technical issues, but we're going to give it a shot. All right, where are my fallouts? We also have fallout shelter, <laughs> which I really need to work on. Fallout 76 needs to be updated. But for now, we'll just... We'll just go with Fallout 3. Starting laggy now? Yeah, I figured it's going to start laggy. It's going to be laggy. I apologize. Um, the It's my connection. I think it could also just be the processing through my capture card. But as long as you guys can still hear me, we're going to do our best. Can anybody um, tell me how laggy it truly is? Like, is it, is it terrible? Because if it's terrible, then we will abort. All righty. Little bit of lag. All righty. But uh, this is Fallout 3, and this takes place in uh, D.C. for the most part. Uh, two out of ten lags. So bad, real bad, right? Real bad. God, let me let me see this from my end. Let me see it from my end here. Okay. We're just going to have to live with it, folks. Normal network lag. All right. Okay. All 
Make sure I got my uh, extra content in. And I guess we'll just, uh, we're just going to have Tony start. We're going to do a new one. And uh, we'll play this for about an hour, hour and a half. Just so you guys can get a little bit of what's going on. We'll let, uh, We'll let the intro play through, and any obviously any copyright songs will have to be muted on my end, so I'm not going to turn on the radio stations of my Pip Boy, so I apologize for that for those who are watching this on the Rewind. But uh, What's up, Dark Helmet? Just going to introduce a little bit of what Fallout really, really is. And again, Fallout 3 had its flaws, but it's a fun game. It's fun to play through. Copyrighted songs for now, yes. But, you know, you know, whenever I play them back, you know, I'll have to mute them. That way I can maintain memberships and all that stuff, and I don't lose monetization. But... Uh... It's not lagging for you. It's fine. I just like listening. True. But, uh, yeah, this is this is a fun game. Can you guys hear the game? Do let me know. There's a T-45. Brotherhood T-45. You have headphones on? Beautiful. Well, while we are doing the intro here, pour me just a wee bit of... Uh brewski because fallout can be quite frigid without a drink. I'm going to drink a little light today because I do have a lot of work later on. I've got a secret project that I need to finish when I'm done here. So, can't, can't, get, can't get sloppy, but I will take the edge off. It's Easter after all. Mm-hmm. Got my nice Nuka-Cola here. And this will drop some exposition for you all. And I guess I just added another one of the many things that I'm now going to have to keep doing. <laughs> That's fine. Cheers. It's Easter. Happy Easter. This is the day that uh, Jesus has conquered life and death, and and that is a, a very amazing and beautiful thing. So, uh, cheers. Vault 101. See, I was talking about Vault 101 not even 20 minutes ago. <clears throat> All right. So basically the we're going to start just there's no audio. That's odd. No audio from me. It's going to go in and out. I do apologize. All right. So the game is starting out. I can always narrate it as well. 
I will uh, obviously be a boy. No audio from the game. I didn't think there would be any audio from the game, but that's perfectly fine. I can just explain what's going on. And I also play with my texts uh, on the screen as well. So uh, if I need to, I'll simply voice act it. Uh, back in the day when we called it this. Which, of course, it's unfortunate that... Uh, that um, we can't hear the great Liam Neeson's performance as James, who is the Tony L. <laughs> That's what I get for saying Liam Neeson, right? No audio from the game. Uh, is that a confirm on both ends? Yeah. Did I put Tony or Tony uh, Tanya? I can't remember now. Oh, well. Let's see here. Let's see here. One that's close enough, right? Very dated models, but here we are. Very dated models, I agree. Too thick there. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they are quite. That's very Howard Stark looking or looking with it. And this thing. I could have swore there was a thin, a more, um, that's close. I like that name though. Bristly Cool might be better. Oh, that seems more fitting. Yeah, we want to get started. We're not here to play dress up. <clears throat> oh, very strapping, says mom who uh, passed away uh, during our birth, by the way. It's a big world out there, son, full of all sorts of people. What about you? What kind of person are you going to be? James, James something. That's Madison Lee saying that. You know, we'll be meeting her later on. Catherine, Catherine, she's going into cardiac arrest. And, of course, mom dies. We had complications during the birth. I love the symboliz the symbolization. If Howard Stark was there, there's no fallout <laughs> arc reactor. Yeah, right. 
Don't look straight into the light, pal. You hurt your eyes. It's just something you get used to down here. All right, now I am a toddler. Come on, walk the daddy. And, of course, I'm not going to walk the daddy. I'm going to look around. And, of course, this comes up later. This is very, uh, very storyline-driven. But since I am Tony Stark and a genius, I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read this at being one year old. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Revelation 21.6. And then there is the activate your special. Can't activate that book yet. Assortment of toys and toy box. I can jump. <laughs> a one year old can jump. There we go. There you go. My goodness, just a year old and already walking like a pro. And jumping, too. <laughs> Your mother would have been so proud. Listen, kiddo, I know you don't like it when daddy leaves you alone, but I need you to take care of yourself for a minute. Oh, great. Yeah, he locks me in the pen. You just stay here while daddy runs to his office. Okay, so James is uh, the vault doctor. We are currently in vault 101. And little kickball there. But, uh, yeah, obviously, I'm a genius. I know how to open doors. Exit the play area, which it did. And then, just look at the book here. Now, this is where we're going to get our uh, stats. Now, since I'm doing a Tony Stark build, as I'll probably be doing this throughout all of the games going forward, we're going to have high charisma, high intelligence. So we'll just go ahead and show you guys. Again, a lot of these people don't know what I'm doing. But this is Fallout 3. It's an introductory. This, was, this Fallout was introduced to the last generation, to essentially to the millennial generation. Whereas, uh, you know, so, uh, older folks were introduced to the older games, you know, early millennials, uh, closer to the Xennial mark uh, with Fallout 1 and 2, which are top-down, turn-based uh, games, which are equally fun and lore-heavy. Frank Horgan is still the scariest motherfucker in the game series, and I've seen a lot of terrible, terrible things. Frank Horgan is terrifying. I hate him. S is for strength, and it means I am strong. I can carry more toys and swing stuff all day long. I'm going to keep our strength at average. P is for perception, a long, funny word. It means what I what I tasted, smelled, and saw and heard. E is for endurance. That's how long I can play. I am always really healthy and have energy all day. C is for charisma. That's why people think I'm great. I make my friends laugh and smile and never want to hate. I is for intelligence. It means I'm really smart. I use my brain for lots of stuff like science, math, and art. A is for agility. That's how I get around. I move real fast and easy, and I never make a sound. L is for luck, and it's simple. You see, it means that good things always happen to me. Now, I have five points to go. <clears throat> yeah, mentats. See, mentats are good, but I'm going to be naturally intelligent because, fun little fact, this game is old enough, I can go ahead and spoil it. Uh, your intelligence determines how many skill points you get. And the more skill points you have, then your special stats mean Jack Deadly. So I will be doing charisma training with special training for my early levels to get my charisma up because I'm not going to be convincing people a lot. But this is the trick. Just, just go all into intelligence so that I can spam my skill points on each level up. Okay. I are genius. I am Tony Stark. We're going to walk towards the door. Dad's going to come back in. Use that brain. And then, of course, the cool thing about Mentats is if you do want to be a Mentat user and you already got intelligent, intelligence at that level, you can stop, pop a Mentat, and then as you level up, if you're like right at the cusp of leveling up, you're going to get those extra points there too. 
And now he's going to read the passage. Again, very important passage. <clears throat> That's not Jet. It's a Jimmy hat. <laughs> the intelligent bobblehead is in Rivet City Science Lab. Yes, it is. And if this is going to be a completionist playthrough, I will, you know, obviously do a completionist playthrough, as I like to do. And uh, we're just going to follow Dad through his living room. We get to see a little bit more of the vault. Now, for those of you who are modders and hackers, um, you can force this into third-person view with a console command. And it's just, you know, a shrunken down human model. It's not a baby or a toddler. It's just a <laughs> shrunken model. Nine years later. Yay! Vault 101 birthday party. And now here's the first exposure to uh, what a Mr. Handy is. And now I'm 10 years old. Everybody's telling me happy birthday. Um, yeah. And it's like, oh, look, it's just, I can't believe you're already 10. I'm 10, I'm, and I've probably helped you work the reactor without anybody knowing, right, Dad? Here comes the overseer. He, The overseer in Vault 101 is a particularly nasty... A political posturing prick. And uh, you'll find that out real quick. Everybody present to you your very own Pip Boy 3000. Get used to it. This is how you interact with your character stats, inventory, game HUD, all that stuff. That's your Pip Boy. You're getting your first work assignment tomorrow. Enjoy your party. And now we have Amada. I'm really surprised. Your dad was afraid you were onto us, but I told him not to worry. You're so easy to fool. Of course. All right. Great party, Amada. Thanks for doing this to me. Is this it, or has the real party started yet? I could be a douche nozzle. Nah. You didn't fool me. I just pretended not to know. You're such a liar. Okay, if you're so smart, what did I get you for your birthday? Okay. I'm going to say a date with Christine Kendall. <laughs> Gross. I didn't think you even liked girls. And you know what I mean before you say something rude about me. No, 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 no. I guess I should just give this to someone else. Someone who likes Grognak the Barbarian better than me and Christine. <laughs> Question is, is how could you tell the difference? Ha, ha, ha. Teehee giggle. All right. So now I have Grognak the Barbarian. I can go ahead and I can read that. That is something that we can go ahead and read. All right. We go over to our items. And we can see here. Grognak the Barbarian. Melee weapons has increased by one. So now I have a skill up in hand-to-hand. -hand. Uh, I hope that you appreciate the effort Amada put into this party. She seems to really like you for some reason. But what about Christine? Of course she likes me. I'm a really charming guy. <laughs> she did a great job, but couldn't you have helped out a little bit more? Yeah, I'm a really charming guy. Don't presume too much of her friendship, young man. I'm still the overseer, and I'm still in charge of this fault, and everyone in it. Ah, oh, blah, 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 blah. Run your cocksucker some more. Old Lady Palmer. Are you having a nice party? Ten years old. My, my, my. Seems only like yesterday that when your daddy came. Uh-oh, exposition dump. Goodness, listen to me ramble. You're still waiting for your present, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, uh, you didn't have to bring me a present, Mrs. Palmer. Huh. Fiddlesticks. What is a ten-year-old don't like presents? I'm being a nice guy. I was ten once, believe it or not. My goodness, the vault was practically crowded back then. Oh, another bit of exposition dump. Not like today. So few young people now. But here I am, rambling on again. Are you listening? And you listening so politely? Here you go, a nice sweet roll that I baked just for you this morning. And it's all for you. No sharing required today. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to piss off Butch Deloria over here. I'm going to piss off Butch. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to eat this sweet roll. That way Butch doesn't have it. Andy, wait. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's time to cut the cake. Well... You certainly cut it. <laughs> certainly cut it. And I'm definitely going to take a kid's party hat. I'm going to put that bad boy on. Because why, why wouldn't I? It's 
my birthday. It's my birthday, and I'll cry if I want to. Wally Mac. Megaton Sheriff's House has the strength bobblehead. Yep. This party's pretty good, I guess, for a little kid. Balloons, party hats. Not as cool as my party, though. Remember how my dad got Andy to do the magic tricks? We all got to play Hunt the Mutant in the atrium. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're a privileged little cocksucker, ain't you? Oh, right. You weren't invited to my party. Too bad, man. It was really fun. Uh, whatever. Yeah. I'm hungry, and that stupid robot destroyed the cake. Meet Butch Deloria. Give me that sweet roll you got from old lady Palmer. This was Mrs. Palmer uh, said I didn't have to share. You lo do look hungry. What, your mom drank up all the ration coupons again? <laughs> I threw it away, but you're welcome to eat it off the floor if you want. <laughs> mm, it sure was good when I ate it a few minutes ago. <laughs> Wait, what? Dang, I love sweet rolls old lady Palmer makes. You little, just stay out of my way. You got it. Oh, no, no fist fight. No, I wanted to fist fight. <laughs> it's okay. Nonsense. People always enjoy the way little speeches. Besides, that friend of yours could use a reminder that life is not all fun and games. Hey, uh, thanks for inviting me. Really cool party and everything. I know that uh, Butch and I give you a hard time, but don't take that seriously, right? Anyway, uh, happy birthday and everything. I better get back to, you know. All right. So we're going to talk to Stanley. He was the guy that fixed the pit boy for us. How do you like that Pip Boy Sun fit all right and everything? It's kind of it seems kind of old. It's really cool. Did you fix it up for me? I hate it. How do I get it off? All he said my Pip Boy was a piece of junk. <laughs> yeah, it'll be nice. As a matter of fact, I did. I'm glad you like it. Some may think of the A series is a bit, bit basic, but I preferred them for their reliability. Uh, thanks, Stan. Sure. Don't mention it. Oh, yes, I almost forgot. Happy birthday. It's not much, but I hope you like it. So, kids baseball cap. That I see here. I think that gives me perception one. Melee weapons plus five. That works. What Butch won? I thought you were in trouble there for a second. Uh, he, wanted my sweet, uh, he wanted my sweet roll, but I told him off. Don't worry about me. I'm not scared of him. Oh, I know. He thinks he's so tough. One of these days, he'll figure out a way to get him back, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Butch is just a bully. Having a good time? It ain't easy keeping this a secret. Now, go on. I'm sure everyone else will like a chance to talk to the birthday boy. What are you talking about? We're going to go shoot the rad roach. Oh, let's... All right. Are we ready? Hey, Doc. Hey, pal. All right, I'll sit him down. Hey, that was Jones on the intercom. He and I have been cooking up a little surprise present. Jonas is waiting for you downstairs in the reactor level. Go ahead. I don't think anyone will mind you slip out for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead. and That's a little bit more of the vault. And again, this is a dated game. Oh, it's, it's Mrs. Deloria. <laughs> Oh, I didn't miss the party. Yeah, my dad and Amada threw me a great party, didn't they? I'm not a girl. I'm not five. Stop calling me dearie. Yeah, we'll be nice. Yeah, I'm Ten years old. Why? I can remember you're helping your dad change your diapers. And I'll look at you. Great big grown-up ten-year-old with your very own Pip-Boy. Since this was a special occasion, do you know what I did? I wrote you a poem just for you, and I hope you like it. Thanks, uh, I guess. Did you give me anything else? A poem? You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right along, dearie. I have yourself a wonderful birthday. Okay, so that's from Beatrice Deloria. That's Butch's mom. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll read it. This, this woman is also an alcoholic, which uh, you'll find out. <laughs> She's got vodka bottles all over the room. Uh, gray walls, impenetrable steel, suffocation, condemnation. Little hands groping in subterranean uncertainty. Mommy, daddy, am I dead? Nay, nay. Reborn into this purifying fluorescence. A face emerges strong and male. Father to me, father to all. Overseeing our lives, our eternities. Harshness of discipline, harshness of love. Obedience, my savior. 
Larva to pupa, pupa to worker, buzz buzz, one of the steel honeycomb. Ten lies within the 101, significant at last, till gray seeps from the walls, from hair to soul, the eternal slumber, the sweet sleep of incineration. <laughs> so you can tell that this woman has issues. <laughs> okay, Dad, let's go. <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to go ahead, right? To the reactor level. That's to Dad's office. That's the upper level. There's Jonas. That's the technician. What are you doing down here, young man? I thought kids weren't allowed in the reactor level. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Can it, Jonas? Where's my surprise present already? Oh, but Dad told me it was okay to come down here. <laughs> oh, I see. Now that you're 10, you're all business. Well, then, mister, we better get to it. Damn right. <laughs> get out of here. Happy birthday, by the way. Hang on one more minute. I think I hear someone coming in. It's uh, James. He's going to be right behind us. And again, you're missing a, an all-star vo voice performance of Liam Neeson. Uh, Liam Neeson is the voice actor behind uh, James. Are you ready for your surprise? What kind of surprise? The overseer set, gave you your pit boy, and you're old enough to do some work, so I figure you're old enough for this. Your own BB gun. It's a little old, but it should work perfectly. Jonas found it down here. It was pretty rough shape. Took us three months to find the parts to get it working again. You know how tough it is to find a spring that small? Good thing Butch misplaced that switchblade of his. <laughs> what do you think? You want to give it a try? Here? We can't shoot a gun here. <laughs> we sure can, unless we want the overseer beating down our door. Jonas and I have found a place, though. Come on. What time is this running to? We're Since I'm now playing through Fallout 3 uh, and getting uh, established... We're probably going to go for another hour. So two and a half hours instead of two. That way we can get up to the wasteland, establish ourselves a little bit. All righty. Well, what do you think? You come down here and shoot anytime you want. Yeah. Could have done it without Jonas's help. You make sure to thank him. All right. Good deal. All right, so did it auto-equip? Yes, it did. And I have 50 BBs. All right, now, of course, a little a little technical uh, discussion about Fallout 3. Fallout 3 is running on the creation engine or, that came out around the same time as the Elder Scrolls Oblivion. And they tried to emulate hit scan gunshots right so how do you get around this well you crouch first that increases your accuracy and then you iron sight as best as you can and then you can usually get around that All right, so use the BB gun to kill the rad roach. Now this is where things get fun. So we side in on the rad roach. Okay, we, got, we do have to stand up for that. All right, that's fine. Pop. And pop. Wow, it still lives. Okay. Sounds good. Good work. There's one less rad roach to kill with. Well, remember to get dog meat. He's been up there for 300 years, frozen. He's been up there. You got to remember, the puppy's perk allows you. No, uh, I'm. I usually don't play with vats unless absolutely necessary. I I do kind of like the real time events of shooting, even with the game as flawed as this. Vats does fix that issue by auto hitting, based on your percentage to hit. All right. We are now very young. We are 15 or 16. And now it's time to go take the GOAT. The general, uh, I think it's the general aptitude test, uh, the GOAT. All right, but I'm really sick, Lie. Anything I need to know about the GOAT? The generalized occupational aptitude test, GOAT. 
Everyone here in the vault takes it when they're 16. Helps to figure out what sort of job they'll have down here in the vault 101 when you get a bit older. So pay attention and try not to fall asleep. You know what the overseer says? We're born in the vault, we die in the vault. But old lady Palmer said he just tested to determine their abilities that they may work for the betterment of all vault residents. Sound familiar? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Do we have to die in the vault? Can't we ever leave? Is a true dad? Was everyone born in the vault? Yeah, that's the insight question. That's what the overseer says, isn't it? He's not ab about to let anyone else in, so I guess that's how it has to be. You're here now, and it's a hell of a lot better at being up there. All your mother ever wanted and I ever wanted was for you to be safe. Okay. Can we talk about, you know, mom? Yeah. Let's be a family kid. Your mother, she was beautiful, but beyond the beauty you've seen, there was just so much those old photos can never show. Sorry about my cats making noise. And she was passionate about life, about love. But most of all, most of all, she was passionate about you. For the few moments that she, she had me. When she became pregnant, it was the happiest I ever had seen her. That was great things in mind for you. It's two different dog meats. So I don't think dog meat's going to be going from, from the capital wasteland to the Commonwealth. Even with cloners. All right. Let's let's go take the test. It's not my call. Those are the rules. You're 16 now, so this is your turn to take the goat. Come on, it's not that bad. Everyone has to take it. You'll do just fine. Yep. Okay. Now get out of here and good luck. Well, now we can actually start picking crap up. So let's go ahead and do that. First things first. We're going to grab the intelligence. That's a medicine bobblehead. That's going to increase my medicine by 10 points. Now, another thing is you see the value next to all these random items, right? So we're going to metagame a little bit. Everything up top side. Dollars don't exist. Things exist with caps. Hey, Canadian Spider-Man, how you doing? So we're just going to take everything we possibly can because that's going to carry over in our inventory. And when we get to Megaton, we are just going to sell, sell this all off. So we have a little bit of accessibility to some caps. Scalpel, stim pack. That's your medicine. That's how you heal yourself. We're just going to make sure that we have some basic caps. Happy Easter to you, Canadian Spider Man. Going shooting at a bonfire, Stark Fire, and just drop by to encourage people in the chat to please hit the like button and subscribe to your channel right here since it's free and has no obligations. Absolutely. So we're just going to search all of these thingies and get everything that we can. I also have a flashlight here. Hold on. Let me turn that on. There we go. We have a flashlight located on our pit boy. A lot of people don't know that. We're just going to grab as many items as we can. Okay. And we're going to take them with us to the surface. Toolbox here. Hail Billy Power Max. How are you doing today, sir? Nice, Tony. You're way over 600. Yeah, I'm nice effort. Thank you, sir. I think I'm at 630. I had two new people join after Friday Night Frolics uh, last night, but then YouTube did its uh, its usual pruning that it likes to do, which is fine. All right. Nothing in there. Nothing in there. Hopefully the game isn't lagging too far on your guys' end. Hopefully it's watchable. This is Stanley. This is the guy that works on the robot. He's our vault roboticist. 
here we are, Butch Deloria. And they're picking on Amada, who is now as old as we are. Yep, 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 yep. And Butch is now the leader of this beatnik gang called the Tunnel Snakes. And if you don't know who the Tunnel Snakes are, well, they rule. And that's all that you need to know about the Tunnel Snakes. <laughs> <laughs> Tunnel snakes rule. My God, they would. You know, it's hilarious because they get up topside and they just they can't handle it. This little this little beatnik gang. All right, let's talk to Amada. Stupid tunnel snakes, immature assholes. If you ask me. Why don't they leave me alone? It's not my fault. My father's the overseer. I don't care about their stupid gang. Can you talk to them? Maybe Butch will listen to you. Butch and his friends bothering you again. I'll see if I can talk some sense into them. Thanks. You've always been a good friend. Try talking to Butch. I'll do whatever he says. All right. Hey, dipshit. Yeah, what do you want? What's going on here? It looks like you're having fun. <laughs> Tunnel snakes, huh? Is that some kind of gang? Is that it? Huh? <laughs> Only the baddest gang of Vault 101, like you don't know. We rule this vault. What we say goes. You'll stay out of our way if you know what's good for you. All right. Well, it looks like you're having fun. Damn right. And you'll stay out of your way if you know what's good for you. No one messes with the tunnel snakes, especially not the stuck-up little daddy's girl. Speech, 50%... Uh, if you keep messing with her, the overseer is going to come down on your gang. Maybe you're right. We can deal with her later. There you go. Shit. Come on, Tunnel Snakes. This little bitch isn't worth our time. Yeah, get the fuck out of here. Saber is drinking some Nuka and whiskey, just so you know. I'm having a little bourbon today. Not a lot. Just enough to be able to role play this out and make it seamless for you all. I don't know what they won't leave me alone. Well, there you go. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Let's go to class. It's a classroom. No, that's the reactor. And, of course, had I gotten to a fist fight with Butch, I avoided two fist fights. I wanted to fight him. Uh, HP 30. This is purified water. It's one, of the, it's one of the few sources of purified water. So it's not going to be radioactive. Well, you made it. All set for the goat. Trust me, it isn't that bad. Just something everybody has to go through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Sure, I'm ready. I bet I'll ace it. Come on. Do I really have to take the stupid test? I bet I'll ace it. I'm sure you will, especially since it's multiple choice with no wrong answers. We'll start as soon as everyone's found a seat. Good luck. All right. So we will... Wow. I'd rather not sit in the front. Oh, the nerd at the front of the class. Okay. Well, now that everyone has managed to find the classroom, we can finally get started. No talking and keep your eyes to yourselves. All righty. Yes, I'm talking to you, Mr. Deloria. That's Butch snickering. Sure thing, Mr. Brutch. Unless someone else has some insightful comment, let's get started. Question one. A frenzy vault scientist runs up to you and yells, I'm going to put my quantum harmonizer in your photonic resonation chamber. What is your response? Obviously, we're going with an intelligence build, so I'm going to say, but doctor, wouldn't that cause a parabolic destabilization of the fission singularity? <laughs> Question two. While working as an intern in the clinic, a patient with a strange infection on his foot stumbles through the door. The infection is spreading at an alarming rate. The doctor has stepped out for a while. What do you do? While working as an intern in the clinic. All right. So amputate the foot before the infection spreads. Scream for help. Medicate the infected area to the best of your abilities. Restrain the patient and merely observe as the infection spreads. <laughs> We're going to go with Medicaid. Question three. You discover a young boy lost in the lower levels of the vault. He's hungry and frightened, but also appears to be in possession of stolen property. What do you do? 
Give the boy a hug and tell him everything will be okay. Confiscate the stolen property by force and leave the boy there as punishment. Pick the boy's pocket and take the stolen property for yourself and leave him to his fate. Leave the boy the safety, but then turn him into the overseer. I'm going to go with that one. Question four. Congratulations. You've made it onto the Vault 101 baseball team. Which position do you prefer? All righty. Uh, pitcher, catcher, designated hitter. None. You wish the Vault had a soccer team. Uh, let's go with uh, let's go with pitcher. Question five: Your grandmother invites you to tea, but you're surprised when she gives you a pistol and orders you to kill another vault resident. What do you do? Uh, obey your elder and kill the resident with the pistol. Offer the most prized possession for the resident's life. Ask Granny for a minigun instead. After all, you don't want to miss. Throw your tea in Granny's face. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna trade. Offer my most prized possession. Question six: Old Mister Abernathy has locked himself in his quarters again. You've been ordered to get him out. How do you proceed? Use a bobby pin to pick and lock the door. Trade a vault hoodlum for his cherry bomb, and blow the door open. Go for the armory. Armory. Retrieve a laser pistol and shoot the lock off. Walk away and let the old coot rot. We're gonna get the laser pistol shoot the lock off question seven. Oh no you've been exposed to radiation and a mutated hand has grown out of your stomach what is the best course of treatment i always like to use a bullet of the brain here but we, we got to be in character uh large doses of an anti-mutagen agent prayer maybe god will spare you in exchange for his life of pious devotion removal of the mutated tissue with a precision laser we'll go with uh anti-mutagen agent uh, a fellow Vault 101 resident is in possession of a Grognak, the Barbarian comic book, issue number one. You want it. <clears throat> what is the best way to obtain it? Trade the comic book, steal the comic book at gunpoint, sneak into the resident's quarters and steal it. Slip some knockout drops into the resident's Nuka Cola and take the comic book when he is unconscious. We're just going to trade for it. Question nine. You decided it would be fun to play a prank on your father. You enter his private restroom with no one is looking, and good to see you, Don Lewis. Hail to you, sir. Uh, we can loosen the bolts on some pipes. When the sink is turned on, the restroom will flood. Put a firecracker in the toilet. Break into the locked medicine cabinet and replace his high blood pressure medication. Manipulate the power wattage of his razor so he'll get an electric shot next time he shaves. We're going to go with the technical uh, one. Question 10, who is there indisputably the most important person in Vault 101? He who shelters us from the harshness of the atomic wasteland and whom we owe everything we have, including our lives. We'll just go with the overseer because that's all the same. Pencils down. That's it. The infamous goat. I'm sure most of you didn't find it so bad. Others, well, there's always openings in the maintenance department. <laughs> Don't forget to hand your tests over when you leave. You don't want to know what happens to the people who fail the goat. Now, he's going to go sit down at his desk. And we're going to watch these people turn their papers in. Some people are going to be happy. Other people aren't. And I'm going to check to see that message from Saber at the Twitty Twatty. Do you still need to do the voice? Yes, yes. All right, and we're going to have a guest, I believe. Let me grab that. And we can talk a little bit about the future show coming up with this guest. It was dog meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. You surprised me, Butch. I didn't think you had it in you. Hairdresser. Who'd have thunk it? The, the baddest gang member in the vault. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gonna be a he's gonna be a barber. I'm all done, Mr. Brotch, I guess. Uh, wait a second. Can I have it back? I think I need to change one of my answers. Just calm down a minute, Paul. I'm sure you have nothing to worry about. 
Let's see. Just as I thought, you're slated for the engineering track. Congratulations, Mr. Hannon. You've passed the go. It's going to be an engineer. I think it's hilarious, though, that, uh, oh, gee, that's not so bad. Engineering. All right. Now we'll see what uh, we got here. Mother can't wait to find out what I'm going to be in science or electronics. Here we go. Science. Oh, well, perhaps. Let's see what the goat says. <laughs> well, well, well. Maintenance. I hope your mother will be pleased. I'm sure Stanley will be. Ah! <laughs> What? That's impossible. I'm telling father he won't let me get away with this. Yep, 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 yep. Enjoy picking up the trash. All right. Let's see what the other uh, students. I guess she's Susie Mac. Go ahead. Talk to him. You want to say anything or? Okay. And Freddie Gomez is still trying to figure out what he wants to do. Wally Mack hasn't went up there yet. I guess I'll talk to him. They say the goat never lies. According to this, you're slated to be the next vault chaplain. God help us all. Wow, a preacher. Um, uh, that can't be right. The stupid test got it all wrong. Uh, listen, I was just as obnoxious as your age. I didn't take the goat seriously, and look where I ended up. Just between you and me, the whole test is a joke. Yeah, we know. Don't like your results. I can make your goat come out any way you want. Just let me know. All right, now we're going to pick our tag skills. So barter, explosives, and medicine is all it needs to be a, pre a preacher. So we want to keep the medicine... And we want to go ahead and hit the science for 40. And we do need an offensive option. But I also want my speech skill to be high. So we'll go with speech. And the first level up, we'll just dedicate to weapons training. All right. Well, let's get out of the classroom. <clears throat> All right. Now the vaults, there's alarms going off, which you can't hear. And Amada's waking me up. Amada says, you got to wake up. And I'm like, how weird. I was just dreaming about you. Don't be a smart mouth. This is serious. <laughs> My father's men are looking for you. They've already killed Jonas. You've got to get out of here. Okay. And I said, what? Jonas is dead. The hell's going on? Father, if your father killed Jonas, I'm going to make him pay. Yeah, because we're working in the same department, essentially. Uh, yeah, I'm going to make him pay. You don't understand. It's your dad. He left the vault. They think Jonas helped him. Okay. And they think you're part of it. You know how paranoid my father is anyway. This has pushed him right over the edge. Yeah, yeah, your father's a prick. You can worry about revenge later. Right now, you've got to get away before security gets here. My dad can't have left. The door's still shut. You're right. I've heard enough. I'm going to make them pay. Fine. Escape first. Pay back later. Good. And you're finally talking sense. <clears throat> My God is, this is also crazy. I can't believe your dad didn't tell you when he was leaving. No, I had no idea he's planning to leave. It's not your business. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sure he had his reasons. Maybe Jonas was supposed to explain everything to you. Now Jonas is dead. But it doesn't matter. I can help you escape. I have my own plan. Escape the vault. How? Not another one of your plans, Amada. I don't need help from anyone, especially from the overseer's daughter. Well, escape the Listen, there's a secret tunnel that leads directly from my father's office to the exit. You'll have to hack the computer in his office to open it. Use these to get into his office. That's how I always get in. So she's going to give me uh, some bobby pins to pick the lock. Sounds like a good plan. Let's get out of here. This sounds awfully complicated. Why can't I just get out the normal way? What makes you think the tunnel will be guarded? It could be a trap. 
Oh, and one more thing. I stole my father's pistol. I hope you won't need it, but you better take it just in case. This is going to be a 10 millimeter. There he is. Snail. Hi, buddy. <laughs> How you doing? Buzz you. What do you mean, yeah, there we... Yes, we, You said 6 o'clock. I said 3 p.m. Eastern. 3 p.m. Eastern Standard. You said 6 o'clock. Did I? I had to stream up. Well, hi. Yeah, you did. You hi, know you did. I, I, sang, I sang a few songs and uh, and just just. Oh God what damn! Happened. It's three p.m. My bad. I'm so fucking sorry. You're fine. You're fine. I was able to. Why was I so life. sure it was six o'clock? I I I was I was singing songs and and I I'm sorry. The the nukes all the way up. It was okay. The stream's fine. It's fine. Playing a little Fallout I can't 3. Hear you. Oh, can you hear me now? I'll even come back. All right. That's weird. Can you hear me now? Nope. Can't hear a thing. Uh, you're hearing the game, ain't you? This is strange. That is very strange. Um, might be a StreamYard thing. You sure you can't hear me at all? Uh, I'll restart my computer. Okay, that's nuts. Can everybody hear me out there? Have been have I been talking to dead air? It could be a StreamYard thing. Audio in. Microphone in. Razor. All right. We're going to do a little test. Testing, testing. One, two. Testing, testing. One, two. But we can't hear each other. That's the issue. Uh, thanks, Amada. I'll only use it as a last resort. And I'm being honest with that. Ammo is going to be very rare. So I'm going to be killing a lot of these guys with the baseball bat and with hand-to-hand. Uh, -hand. But first things first, we want to make sure that we steal everything we can. We want to take everything we can up with us topside so that we can have some base caps. So here's our baseball bat. We're going to use that. There's the BB gun. There's Ranker Steve. Can you hear me, Ranker Steve? Si, senor. Okay, so it is an issue with uh, issue with. Um... All right, Snail Messiah, can you hear me now? Snail Messiah. Who me? I believe you're now muted. Is your uh, audio in and out? No sound. That is odd. Check your stream yards and make sure that your audio output is uh, tuned to your default source of audio. Even, I don't know why I said that. Um, we'll pause this right quick. Cool thing about Bethesda games is when you're looting something, it freezes time. Uh, yes. Check your default audio. And now I have no input. You are muted. He's pulling a me and he's muted. What the hell? Here we go. Hey, can you hear me now? Yep. Magnifico. Cheers. It changes settings on its own. <laughs> the duck of death is notorious for that. Ah. Uh, oh, Steve. Hey. So, how are you guys doing today? Uh, did you guys have a good Easter? Um, yeah, I spent the day with some uh, family from Greenland. Ooh. Well, that's fun in the bun. It is. Right. I like them a lot. So, we're gonna go ahead, and since we want to save our ammo till we get topside, we're we're gonna be bashing people's brains in with a bat. 
um, because they're not going to be dealing too much in the way of damage to me right now, and that just saves ammunition. And I want to basically take everything that isn't nailed down because we're going up into a post-apocalyptic hellhole, and they're going to see all this cherry shit. Hey, 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 you better watch out, pal. Oh, he's so there's a little right. lag going on for your game there. What's that about? Uh, that's just my that's my connection. I I do apologize. It, it's oh. good on my side, but it's probably shittier than balls to everybody else, including yeah, the oh, you... like ten frame rate. Yeah. Hey, dog meat. How you doing? Now, are you gonna do anything? Yeah, you gonna come at me? Come on, pal. If only I was there, I could bait some of the asses. <laughs> <laughs> no, you left me frozen for like 300 years. What was up with that? There we go. I so have I you watched the trailer for the Fallout show? I, I am very concerned, and I feel like now that we have people here that are in the know about the Amazon scene and and are more privy to the bait that they're giving us, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I, I'm so scared. I don't want it to be this bad, but I have a bad feeling it's going to be pretty rough. Has anyone and, noticed that I'm doing the specifically Fallout free dog meat because the other one wouldn't make a lot of sense considering dogs only live like 13 years? I um, I think dog meat is actually from the Institute. Yeah. I, a have a, I have a theory that he is a robot, and I think it's true because it, um, when you go to like big, like big mountain, he actually has an ending, All right, like his own so... ending. Oh, we will. I, think he, was, I think he was made by Big Mountain. Is like sort of a vault guard dog, and he's just been hanging around since like forever. But I, I really think it's a synth. That's what I mean. Dark Helmet says his dog made it to 18. Yeah, but that's long ways from uh, 300 to uh, 18, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Now we'll just pop that rad roach and call it. There we go. How did it live? Damn. And my it... my version of dog meat got frozen 300 years ago. Oh, it was frozen go. too? My one was. Oh, I mean, and, can and Canon. I mean, it's just multiple different dogs that just happen to have the same name. All right. Now I have that Tunnel Snakes jacket, which is, I guess, all neat and stuff. But yeah. And what did I tell you? She has alcohol everywhere. And of course, since I'm role playing a Tony Stark. Unless you treat, it, unless you treat Big Mountain as not just a DLC and Canon, because if it is Canon, then he's actually a robot. So while we're while I'm basically just you know smashing shit in with a bat, since that doesn't require a lot of brain power, let's go ahead and allocate some of those synapses to discussing just how how bad we think the show is going to be. And I guess we'll go round robin with it, and uh, we'll start with Ranker Steve. Do you know anything about what's coming up with the uh, Amazon Fallout show? Are you in the know a little bit about that? Give me a quick. I know some stuff, but give me a quick. I'm refreshing my brain on this, but right. I, there are some things I do know about the show. Mm -hmm. So but, Amazon, um, Amazon is uh, spearheading a Fallout TV series that uh, Bethesda has already uh, confirmed is going to be also canon with the uh, canonical events of the games, hmm. and uh, that that is also very concerning. Uh, I do know that Bethesda has concerned it, uh, uh, confirmed it. Um, since Starfield, I've been concerned about Bethesda. <laughs> yeah, since Starfield. I've been, yeah, I've, been I've been concerned with Bethesda since Fallout 4. I apparently am the only one. Yeah, Fallout 4 was uh, definitely a trip in the wrong direction for integrated Yeah, RPG. it was like less RPG, more COD. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter what you do, you're the hero. That's not the point. Yeah, sometimes you want to play a bad guy. Yeah, at least in this one, you can like, you can just be a straight up dick. You can blow up an entire city, and you can like just be the most evil person ever. You can literally bring back the FEV for, you know. Oh yeah, you can want. put the FEV into the water. Yeah, 
you know, you can uh, be the master. So, you can basically be the master if you want. Essentially, yeah. So long story short, yeah. Basically, they're going to have this show that's already got like the the telltale signs of wokeisms. Like the protagonist is uh, female. Uh, the ghoul is a bit quirky instead of established as a badass, as most ghouls are technically badasses, especially if you're out west. It is taking place, I think, out west. I don't know. It could be taking place on the eastern seaboard. We don't know. But uh, it, there, there's the telltale signs. The trailer is, for lack of a better word, lackluster. And I have a bad feeling you know, <laughs> my dog meat pitcher is like literally the, the very place I just mentioned that can be nuked. Oops, <laughs> don't nuke it, you'll kill me. So, uh, I, I watched Actually, the trailer. If, if Big Mountain is canon, you won't. I'll just come back as like metal. That's why it is canon. Well, well, depends if you see DLC is canon. So, let, let me also go ahead and try to get out of this vault as quickly as possible, and then we'll just save it there and we'll. Focus more on the discussion. Okay. Because um, right now, there oh, is one. Oh no, you can go. Sorry. Oh, okay. I, I just love the concept of the vaults. Yeah, really yeah. Do. The social experiments. I did yeah. a big part of my earlier in the show as I was explaining what Voltec really was and how they are not. You know. Well, does I know it trust me, or does that seem like that's exactly what? what the government would do like exactly that just be like shove everyone into a small little area and see what happens no i see it more as a private contractor basically oh yeah Voltec well, has a private contractor they're basically doors to door salesmen i mean you know and four you literally see that mm -hmm. yeah but, but still yeah. I, I still see them as not directly government i see them more as uh Companies wanting okay, to does, make it, does, anyone, does anyone have the theory that they started it deliberately? That they started the war like they were the first? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They completely do it just so they could sell their vaults? Well, also so they can kick in their experiments. And, I mean, for social sciences and and how to control people, it's very valuable information, right? And You've also got to remember stuff. that this was, this was basically if the Cold War had happened. So in the 1950s and 1960s, they were getting away with lobotomies and stuff. So, of course, a private contractor, they could basically do whatever they wanted. Exactly. Any kind of the wackadoo social experiments and, and pseudoscience, and, you know, like just what they did was was just crazy, man. All right, we're going to run towards these guys with the weapons. The we're we're, stuck in, we're basically later. stuck in a world that is still like the 1950s, 40s, after all of that. That just puts the point through that vault -Tec did something. All right, and then you, sir. Crack, 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 crack. Low AP. And okay, slight spoiler for later in the game, they also went into trying to basically do the Matrix. Right. Yep. But, okay. Don't worry. I'm almost done with this. We just got to get out of the vault so we can actually do our first true hard save. Oh, wait. Big Mountain is canon then because that was a Vault Tech research facility. Hey, dog meat robot. Most Vault Tech research facilities, most vaults were the Vault Tech research facilities. Like the, the series of social experiments that they did was. So I'm, talking, I'm talking Big Mountain, like the big oh, main big one. The big did. empty? Yeah, yeah, Big Mountain. Yeah, was it was the main or, was it, or was it or was it DOD? I think it was I think it was the main research because it, basically everything is a different type of vault. The, uh, the, 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 main, big the main test unit the because series. that's where all the mutants came from. Not yeah. the super mutants, but like the mutated right. animals, and it's where it's where dog where meat, the them, apparent yeah. robot the dog comes from. The Cazadors came from that for sure. Yeah, and they uh, and those half dog, half snake things. Yeah, the the coyotes, the night stalkers, yeah. I think they're called. Yeah, they came from there. So that uh, and and one ending. So the robot dog. Meat. Have yourself a good one, pirate dark Tynave. God bless and happy Easter again. Thank you for hanging out with us today. Okay. 
We're but about there. This game maybe confirms that dog meat's just a clone because the puppies just seems like a cover up for like, yeah, we've got the same dog again and again and again and again. And again. And again. <laughs> and again. Where isn't there a water yeah. fountain around somewhere? I'd really not want to use this. And that type. really feels like a vault tech thing to do, doesn't it? Just replicate the same animal over and over again because they know you have an attachment to it. Right. So uh, yeah. dog meat really is a, a cross between a clone and a synth, and it's designed yeah, it to... It depends, if you, it depends if you go with the dog meat ending of Big Mountain being canon, because then he would be technically is the same dog meat, Is dog meat from Big Empty? Is that... Is that... Yeah, it's the same one. So how, did one, the end, so how did one get all the way out to the, the Capital Wasteland? That's like 2,000 miles of country. Because it has the ending where he finds a female and then he has puppies. So it's his puppies that get that get like into Vault 101 eventually. Right. Well, yeah, it's all connected in some way. That's if you treat that one as a, that end in its canon. Get all of the parts, all the stuff, all the stuff. Now, are you attacking he's me? Like or... a, he's kind of like Rex. Like he's that sort of like half dog, half robot thing like what Rex is. Right. But the one in Fallout 3 is his puppies because that's just a pure dog. Uh, the one in... Fallout 4 might so, be a simp because uh, so it might be, you, might be any other... a simp because it can't bloody die. Right. Do you have any other yeah. questions about the overview for the Fallout show, Rank or Steve? Did you look it up? Or... So uh, there's one thing I do agree with one of the creators of the show. Um, mm -hmm. It's with anything that you make of any shows, really, of like games. I'm not a big fan of games to shows or movies. I'm just not. They just never really work. Out. I think there was like one show that actually, or a movie that actually really worked, ish. But it just never really. I don't know. There's always some issues they always have. But one of the creators said, "I don't think you really can set out to please the fans for anything," which he's not wrong. He's not, or please anyone other than yourself. He, I do right. agree with him on that because, in a way, you're kind of making it for you at that point like any project like hey i'm gonna go make well i guess like need for speed i think that was the um only really game to movie i kind of actually enjoyed because it was done in a way where it's like fast and the furious but like didn't take itself so serious but it's i think this is um kind of the the same effect as ring of powers is they don't really care. They're just going to make this and slap Fallout as the title on it. Um, they don't, oh, yeah, they don't care about the fans and they're just going to do what they want to do. And if that's the case, then go for it. They own the rights to do it. So it's, I'm not, I'm not going to see it just because it looks woke as anything. And I'm like, ah, I don't want that. But, you know, if a company is going to make something, they're going to make it however they want, whether we like it or not. Yet at this right. point, at this point, it used to be the studios would listen to the audience. Nowadays, it's not like that. Anymore. We have Hail to point curation and Scott Hall. Good to see you guys. I hate to, I hate to pop all your bub bubbles, but that was never a thing. Hollywood never cared about fans. It was just about the money. And now we're all no. They did. Up there was that. there was a point back, like I mean, before the seventies and everything, like oh, you're way back the in the day. You're, talk you're talking the golden age. Yeah, that's when they started listening yeah. to fans. But then yeah, when all when, the good stuff happened. Yeah, and then when you get to the sequels and like blockbuster summer movies, yeah, everyone yeah, cared yeah, more yeah, about yeah. money and stuff. So yeah, you are right. Um, but it, the golden years of film, when film used to mm -hmm. be fun. You know, yeah. When Scarface, the original Scarface, which Gary's yeah, never when, seen. When, by they, the when way. they actually cared more about the art than they did about the money. Yes. Yeah, I will yeah. say this. Have any of you guys seen the original um, Scarface? I have, and it's like, really uh, good. 1987, no. 1986. No. Has anyone seen the, the, the like, speaking of that, has anyone seen, like, the, uh, the original Godfather, not, like, any of the sequels? Yeah. I think that one's a masterpiece, honestly. The, the, so first, the first yeah, Godfather? Yeah, the first one. The first one. It's just so good. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Here, it's... Um, that's, that's, I'll look up that's what you want out of a gangster movie. So, the original Scarface, the one not with... Uh... The 1932. Oh, 1932. I've never seen, I've never I've seen that. Seen the one from oh, 32. that's such a good one. See, I, oh, I'm God. a I'm a black and white silent film guy. I love that I, stuff. Oh yeah. I am I a like um that. I'm an Ital I love Italian film and um French. Well that's that's something that's dearly missed. Why don't they make nor films anymore? Like, come on, those things were good. I don't know, but if you haven't seen the original Scarface, go check it out. It's I mean, it's not even true that it's more expensive to use black and white. You can put a filter over now, people. You don't need to use antique cameras. Yeah, you can do it. Just anything. do what Stan yeah. said you did. All right, we're going to open the vault door. So we're there uh -oh. now. You're going to kill everyone. I, bet, I, better get out, I better get out of the cryo chamber. I'll be meeting them soon. You're going to kill everybody? Dude, I don't want to die yet. <laughs> It's it's um happy trans day, man. Come on. Oh my god, yeah, well, I saw that stuff. What is with that? What it's, a, it's, a shame, it's a shame that the music's copyrighted because this would have done the iconic music right there, wouldn't have it? Yeah, well, I'm kind of glad that it's muted uh coming out on the YouTube end, and I had to voice post most of this. So. Yeah, because if it if it wasn't, mm -hmm. you would have been copyrighted so hard for the follow-up people oh, there. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, like I said, I can mute any instances of music and not, and it, it's not affected. It would just be a claim, not a strike. Uh, I, I, can't even do an, well. I can't even do an acapella of what that would have happened yeah. without getting the in true, trouble. So I won't. <laughs> the true Tony Stark response when I say I'm going to do something, I do it. Damn right. <laughs> well, then I got See? something for you, man. Yeah, so I'm yeah. guessing, Tony, you're going straight for the power armor. <laughs> I'm definitely going to be a power armor uh, junkie for sure uh, with all of the playthroughs of these games. Power armor that's energy the one, weapons. That's the one thing I think Smooth 4 did better yeah. with power armor because it didn't make sense that you needed training. I mean, the thing was designed to make you survive. Right. It's meant It's meant to be... Easy. All Just right. jump in and that's uh, it. It's basically meant to be the... Out here. I love the signs It's basically out here. meant uh, to be the Iron Man suit. Let us in, motherfuckers. <laughs> Tony, was that your uh, was that your great great grandson? Huh? Was that your great great grandson? Because it sounds like it. No. We're, what is it? Our souls and all that. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Here. Edit name. Make sure that it's. Hey, Tony Stark. If you ever play any copyrighted music, I got you covered. Damn right. Damn right. All right. Exit Vault One Hundred One. It was a nice to talk to you again, Steve. We haven't talked yeah. since uh, I was on Manorama. That, that, that's that's the Manorama call sign right there. <laughs> I've been so busy. The oh man, the topics yeah. have been crazy. Just I know because I'm still in that chat. You're uh, yeah. You're everyone who's yeah. You're still yeah yeah. <laughs> I keep forgetting all, to all use I'm that. I say, Steve, you dealt with that that rather harsh topic very well. Which harsh topic? We well, won't we won mention it. The other, the 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 father one. You dealt with that really well. It's the right subject, isn't it? Because we're on follow oh, the father one. Yeah, you dealt with that really well. Because I didn't have like the greatest father in the world myself. All right. Yeah. Now we're all healed. I'll I get you. I'll get you back on the show. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. It's just anyway, I got to get through. It was yeah. actually pretty relevant considering this game's plot, so it worked. <laughs> hey, okay, there you go. Okay, now we can do our hard save. I'll just do a new save Well, here. unfortunately, I've got to go because I've got egg day activities still to do, but it was nice to talk to everyone. Yeah. And, Tony, please don't blow me up. I'm still waiting for you in Megaton. Is it Megaton? I thought it was the scrapyard right outside to the northwest. Oh, yeah, that's there. Well, just don't blow up Megaton. You'll blow me up as well. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Nice to be nice to be here, and hopefully I'll have time to be around a little bit more. But it's egg day. It, it mm. is definitely Easter Sunday for sure. Uh, All right. Dog meat, dog meat signing off. There we go. Now I'll just turn that off. I like what way. I like what Ray Lurk Lur, oh, I can't pronounce his last name. Lucard. Lucard. Mm -hmm. Lurker. Is that okay? He goes. The cop. Because black and white was an art from the lighting to sets. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I just like that. But yes, uh, Fallout uh, definitely is looking a bit concerning. And uh, but are know, we surprised? I no, no, I'm, I'm certainly not surprised at, in the slightest. If you think about it, Amazon. So there's two different ways that Amazon, Amazon, Amazon does their Amazon, stuff. Uh, Am, Amazon does their stuff. It's Amazon Studios, which are good. They're the better ones. And then you have mm -hmm. Amazon. No, Amazon Studios is the one that does really terrible stuff. It's the ones when they buy this. The film's already made or the show, and then they buy the rights and then they put it on. Those are the good ones. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, so I'm I am concerned. Uh, I don't know. I, I I might watch it. I might do a series review. I, I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and actually watch some of this stuff and start griping about it. You do. Uh, I, so far, I've been I've been avoiding that aspect of this kind of YouTubing, but uh, maybe maybe this would be a good cold open for that. I don't know. Cheers, by the way, a little bourbon for that thought, just for that thought. Mm. <sighs> Lodge Craig can't beat it. So, uh, yeah, Fallout has a very in depth universe. It's, it is a passion. I, I'm a passionate fan, and if you if you don't believe me, just go back to the first hour of the show when I was flying this solo. I just went over detail after detail after detail, and I definitely want to make this reactor side chat a series about certain aspects of Fallout. Like I've not gotten into the Brotherhood or the Enclave or the Institute or any of the major factions. Um. Don't know, you know, I'm not going to talk about Navarro on day one. I'm not going to talk about Frank Horrigan or any of these big bads on day one. I did mention Frank Horrigan in hindsight, and I've seen scary shit throughout this game series, but Horrigan is still the most terrifying thing that I've ever seen in, in a video game as a video game antagonist. He's up there with Handsome Jack level of, yeah, you're going to be you're going to be fucked if you deal if you try to deal with him, kind of like. Just, mm -hmm. His reputation precedes him. Horgan's scary. But Stale Messiah, uh, we'll go ahead and we'll ask you, uh, what's your favorite aspects about Fallout? Like, is it the lore? Is it the gameplay? Is it the concepts, the tales of interest? Uh, it's right the whole world. It's the whole world, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm yeah. a sucker for uh, Apocalypse. <laughs> apocalypse of Wastelands. And right. I am a true sucker of the uh, 40s, 50s, 60s, um aesthetics of how they envisioned the future how it mm -hmm. would be and they got that down to a t in fallout 4. yeah they even got the I little green spaceman they even got the little green spaceman like indeed they do the satans it, the, that's a that's an that's an entire discussion itself just just the the zayton influence the alien influence throughout the history of the world well that's you find out that the they're, they're made by the Institute. You find that out. What? The Zaytans or the Muties? No, no, no. The, the aliens. The, the Zaytans are an Institute product? Yes, they are. No. Yeah. No. No. Yes. No. Don't. Yes. No. Bullshit. Bullshit. Who would have thought? I would have. No, no, I, I you need to cite your sources, sir. I, I I choose not to believe that. Well, you see them in the institute. Well, that's one uh -huh. uh, thing. Yeah, being and, tested on. There's even the, one being tested on by the Enclave in Fallout Three. Ah, uh, they're produced by the institute. As the far Enclave as I can uh, find out. I do know that the Enclave is uh, their technology has been facilitated by the Institute because the Institute is an enclave office. I do know that. But mm -hmm. I don't think that they created aliens that are capable of... Because on Mothership Zeta, you release a, a 14th century samurai from Cryo. You release an 18th century cowboy from Cryo. 19th century cowboy from Cryo. 
all of these recordings throughout human history are on file on this mothership. No, the Zaytans are aliens. Now, is that to say that the Zaytans did not have influence with the Institute or the old government? That's anybody's guess. But for the aliens, little green men with their big ship capable of wiping out a good, you know, small country with one shot. I, no, no, no. Uh, I, I, I have to, I have to have your sources, Snail. Uh, in order yeah, I need to, to find them again. But I read yeah. that that it was an institute um, invention. Mm -hmm. The flying saucer random encounter in Fallout One is from Area Fifty One. That is the ship from Hangar Eighteen. Yes. So the Zaytans have been there since the very beginning. Hmm. No, but anyways, they, they, back to, to what I like about the whole world. I, yeah, I just yeah, let's really that. like that you can... When I play the game, well, I only play Fallout 4. I, I can't go back and play those games because it's quality of life. <laughs> but I, I just like that I can make uh, me... Well, the the character I play, right? Like you're doing uh, Tony Stark. I play around with various characters. Yeah, and I really enjoy that and putting them into that setting. So my head kind of becomes better than the game is for sure. Because Fallout Four is not a very good game. It isn't. It requires an extensive mod list to create a, even a similar depth of interaction and role play. Uh, to the older games because while fallout four is a wide ocean, it is not a very deep one. No. And a huge puddle. Right. It, while it is a wide ocean, it's not very deep. And that's unfortunate because somebody who is from the old world being unfrozen 200 some odd years later, it, it, the, just the role play elements of that alone, seeing the town that he used to go to get groceries from in such ruin and having all of these savages wearing tires and, and shopping carts as rudimentary armor, you know, mm -hmm. zombies walking around giant, like you hear him go giant roaches. What the hell? And that's like his only form of culture shock. After that, you just see him literally just go, yeah, this is weird, but I'll accept it. So whenever I do a Tony Stark playthrough for Fallout 4, I always choose the sarcastic option because the jokes are pretty funny <laughs> and very, very Starkish. Like whenever the scene happens, it's you're being uploaded into a part of Kellogg's brain, and he's just like, he's like, is this gonna be like Frankenstein? Can you say, Eagle, fetch me the brain? I was like, yes. <laughs> or whatever, like you get a hold of that courser call, and you're on that signal. And he's yeah. like, identify yourself. And he's like, I'd like a large pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like a large pizza. Hold the anchovies. No, it's 200 years. It's 200. It's 200 some change. It's 150 when Fallout 1 happens. So everything's still even more hot out there in California. Oh, California gets hit bad. Good. Both coasts get hit because most of the Chinese nukes were delivered by sub. Yeah. And Burn you fight uh, the Yonche out in uh, the Commonwealth. One of the subs. The Yonksta. And of course, seeing as if you wanted to play the vanilla playthrough, like, because the vanilla character's name was Nate and he was a soldier. Yeah, there was the options where you could hold on to that red scare American soldier and be like, "Fucking commie, die!" <laughs> <laughs> it's like two hundred years later, but fucking die. <sighs> you know, so you know there there was some options, but they could have expanded on it extensively. Like when I play through my Fallout Four, you'll find it is very very heavily modded with a lot more items a lot more things to trade for. You can restore a car. One of the things that upsets the ever-living fuck out of me. All right? Because this is an average man in suburban America. 
He's going to be working on his fucking car. And you mean to tell me that 200 years later, he's not going to be going to one of the cars that are sitting there in the suburb and going, okay, this is a long, vast fucking wasteland full of things. I need a car. You mean to tell me that he's not going to fix a fucking car? That makes no sense to me whatsoever. It makes plenty of sense to me because the roads are horrendous. The roads are horrendous, but I'm fixing my fucking so, car. <laughs> I always imagine that, that if the map was larger because they're trying to emulate that is vast distances, right? Mm -hmm. They're trying to emulate that. And mm -hmm. if you have a car, you can traverse that too fast. So that's why wow. run speed is the fastest you'll get. And I get that. But if the map, map was a lot bigger, I would always imagine that he would have an ATV or a motorcycle. The, uh, motorcycle. the highway man in Fallout 2, you can repair a Chrysler's highway man to working order. That's um, a motorcycle, right? No, that's a that's, uh, uh, sedan. Okay. I just think that if somebody who, you know, is going to be that guy that's going to be working on the car in the garage on Saturday afternoon, you know, whenever he's not at work. Well, you need to factor in that these cars are driven by uh, nuclear power. Uh, how do they run? Can he, fix that... a, can he fix an electric engine? I'm guessing that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Can he fix that? Is he, is he uh, you know, electrician? Well, you got to look at it from this perspective. The nuclear-powered car has been uh, an average commodity for the better half of about 30 to 40 years. Still. And, and obviously, obviously, if you're just able to go put coolant into your vehicle, right, at the local gas station to keep your rod inside it cold. Yeah. Then it's not that big of a gap to go, okay, well, this is obviously the fuel source for my engine. Which oh, it's not, not a fuel source. Much, but most of the general mechanics that would be coming from the fuel source to the engine would be the same. An no. engine is still an engine. A transmission is still a transmission. No. Yeah. I, I wholeheartedly disagree with you. <laughs> you disagree with me because it is a fundamental difference of sciences and engineering. I get yeah. that. But I'm under the assumption just from narrative, from something that would be commonplace technology for these people. The coolant is well, still just a coolant. It's not a fuel. It's it's not a fuel. It's a coolant that evaporates mm -hmm. as, the, as the rod needs to be refreshed with the coolant. I get that. What I'm saying is, is the actual source of the fuel is not being touched. Okay? Because if you look at the back of most of the Chrysler's, right? You see where the hose goes in, or you see where they put in a new rod of uranium, right? You mm -hmm. see, you see very obviously where the nuclear element to this vehicle is. And just because it is a nuclear element, then you have to ask yourself, okay, from an engineering standpoint, what is nuclear power best known for? It's an oversized steam reactor. It is literally using the steam pressure generated by hot rods in a big pool of water to generate electricity okay so how do we apply this how do we apply this into an autom automobile well it would be an oversized steam engine another reason why these vehicles are the size of small fishing boats no because, it's still a electrical no. vehicle okay that, so, so is it thermal or is it steam what 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 do you know something i don't i'm, I'm again this is a conjecture Everything I have read about Fallout 4, everything uh -huh. I've read, it is still an electric engine. Still Okay, so it's electric. Yeah. So there has to be a point where the electricity is being generated by A, a nuclear reaction like the flux capacitor from Back to the Future. <laughs> oh, it's, it's created by its own power plant, its own, yeah. its own nuclear power plant. Yeah, that's so like uh, one of the the big ass American um, uh, carriers, right? Nuclear power. Right. It's still an electric okay. engine. Okay, so how is that electric engine being turned over? An electric engine or a motor or a generator, in this case, 
is caused by rotation of a coil, the copper coil within the magnetic environment to create an electromagnetic charge that converts into power. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with a nuclear reactor, the way that we have turned that into electrical power is through the medium of steam pressure to create that motion to generate the power. That is the exchange of one force to another. So but in an automobile, you would have to have some pressure or steam pressure if you were to assume that that's going to be a similar technology, which again, because they're that big and that long, there, you know, you would think that there is a, a, a pressure manifold that is between the reactor and the electrical motor. All right. There's either that or it's more like in Back to the Future where you're literally causing a nuclear reaction in a reactor to create electricity, which that sounds preposterous because while that does help a car travel through time, you don't need a massive amount of power to go down the road. And I think that the uh, nuclear power plant that it basically is, mm -hmm. is best function because I, I think it has too little torque for pulling a car, but it's excellent at making the energy and then use that energy into an electric motor. Correct. So there has to be a conversion point. There has to be a point where uh, power is going in. And this is just me speaking from an engineer's standpoint because I'm an engineer. So you have a, an input to an output, and you have to have a medium that ratios those two uh, numbers. And as far as I'm concerned, if nuclear power is on it the way that is somewhat similar to us, and again, this is coming from a Tales of Interest sci-fi magazine kind of universe where they could have learned more about the atom and and the uh, astonishing amazing ways that you know you know what i mean like for all yeah. we know it could be ion fusion and the ion fusion is generating that electrical runoff that's similar to an arc reactor an arc reactor uses ion fusion to generate its own electrical output mm -hmm. so they could be doing ion fusion it would make sense those reactors are quite circular that could be a rotation. The element could be a ring. We don't know. We only see the caps of it. We don't see the mm -hmm. inside of the vehicle. The only thing that we have that we can compare to it is the nuclear-powered cars that Ford was trying to give us in concept in the 60s. Because Ford was wanting to release nuclear-powered cars back then. Mm -hmm. And it had and it had its own little personal reactor. It had a, a water a water source and a steam pipe manifold. Had a manifold to generate the pressure. Had an electrical motor, and then everything converted out through that through the transmission through chains or belt fed transmission to be able to propel the vehicle. So there there's a similar technology between that and and that. But where does the applicable science that we know about end and the tales of interest sci-fi world of tomorrow pseudoscience begin? That's, that's I think we need to go with the pseudoscience. Yeah. <laughs> tales of tomorrow. Because that is in the game also. The, the, the comic books. What are they called? T tales, tales of, of interest. Mm -hmm. Tales yeah. of interest. Uh, Mr. Housepart's like 1.20 gigawatt, right? right. <laughs> okay, so now we go back to the point that I'm making because we're we, we're both we're both in agreement on the vehicle using the pseudoscience of the future from yep. a retro perspective. Okay, but I'm looking at it as from the narrative of this guy being a member of a nuclear household in a retro futuristic 50 setting. The oh. dad's going to be working on the car. I what the think car is, great. regardless of how the car works, I'm looking at it from the narrative standpoint that the man's obviously going to be tinkering with the car 
on a late Saturday afternoon before setting up the barbecue in the backyard and hanging out with the neighbors. You get my, my point, right? Yeah, but my argument is always, if I drove a Tesla, I still have no idea how to fix it. That's Even true. though I know the... You know, all the components. I have no idea how to fix it. Hmm. So how is this guy able to just create nuclear stuff through the uh, fallouts, uh, create a settlement integration regardless? You mean to well, tell he, me that I can create a thermonuclear generator if my science is at 100 and it looks just as good as the ones that are pre-war just because I have an extra fusion core lying around? Well, you and become a, an electrical are? engineer, right? Uh, it, it's in the science tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but and not fix a car though, which is running on the same science. Yeah, but he doesn't know how to do that until he learns in the game through the perks. The perk tree in Fallout Four is so basic; it's appalling, and it takes it, away. Role play element of what a prior man could have been. I, if I wanted to role play a scientist, what if I wanted to have somebody working for the electric company itself in downtown Boston, who then served in the military as I don't know, combat engineer or or repair guy, right? Mm -hmm. What if I wanted my character to be like that? Okay. You mean uh, to tell me that I still have to learn how to restore generator at max science through the gameplay when I was probably working on something much more advanced and never accessible to civilians prior to that, thanks to roleplay origins? It doesn't make sense to me. That's that's the problem with Fallout 4. That's why I like the older titles, because the older titles can tailor yourself better to roleplay a character that sits the kind of character that you want to run. Fallout 4 is just so basically under, under, it's just under it. Like, it's under par. It doesn't pass muster for an RPG. It's good as a Twitch shooter. It's good as a Twitch <laughs> shooter with lasers. It's good as, it's good as, you know, all of these things. And then it's also good if you want to be a stealth player. And it, so it's kind of good as a ninja game. But at the end of the day, it's just not the kind of RPG that I can I can go back and play Fallout 2. And I can play as any character as I want in Fallout 2. Or Fallout 3. Even. Fallout 3 is basic and as bad and as problematic as Fallout 3 was. You, you know, if you go back to the middle of the stream, as choppy as that frame rate was, I was still building my character and explaining what numbers I was putting where and role-playing a Tony Stark for that. Hmm. Whereas in Fallout 4, the only thing that I could do to make a Tony Stark for it is heavily mod the game to where I have access to technologies that I know I can build, be able to repair a car, be able to build power suit frames, all this stuff. And add it into a game that did not facilitate a technical genius or a savant of that caliber. Same hmm. goes for the other side. What if I wanted to make just a straight up hand to hand fighter? I wanted to do a Chuck Norris build that was all about melee and hand to hand. And only in vets do you see any kind of martial arts finesse. And even then, it's not really into the level of finesse. I want a roundhouse kick a super mutant and kill him. I'm Chuck fucking <laughs> Norris. I can do that. Right? So. Hmm. If I'm making a Chuck Norris build, here's Fallout 4 with its basic set of parameters that while, yes, you can create somebody that could punch through power armor with all the armor ignoring aspects of punching through power armor, right? Mm -hmm. But it's not a roundhouse kick to the face. That's why Fallout 4, in my opinion, this is just the, the doctor's assessment. It requires... Heavy modding, toolkitting, unofficial expansion to even make it comparable to the games before it.
Even Fallout 76 has more RPG elements in it and, and, and not in Fallout 4. And that's an online MMO meant to be raiding like bosses and stuff with other players. 76 is a terrible, terrible game. But it's better than Fallout 4. No. I know that's an unpopular opinion, but it's, it's better than Fallout 4. It, 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 it may have, it may have gameplay game elements that are better. I play it on, on Fallout first. But the role playing aspect of it is completely gone. I play it on Fallout first, so I play it solo. Hmm. It, I, it's I, 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 give, I give them the extra eleven dollars a month so that I can load into that Appalachian Wasteland solo and play it as close to as a Fallout game should be intended, which is solo. I base building is a big thing for me, obviously. Right. Yeah, it's every and that's where my role play come in comes in because I like to imagine that you know the world went to shit and all this and now I have a chance to make an impact on the world. I want to change things. I want to make things mm -hmm. better. Uh, if I'm with the Minutemen, I want to create a new world, basically. And since it's the Minutemen, I have to take it in that spirit. At least that's how I role play. I know a little about you know American history, so I, I try and, and do that. And what you drinking boy, today, right, Steve? I know you're drinking something pretty heavy, but yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Uh, uh, how how nibbled are you? Huh? <laughs> how nibbled are you? No, I'm kidding. No. Uh, Maker's Mark. Maker's Mark. Good Kentucky bourbon. Uh, I found out some tasty, tasty apple juice. Apple cider. I didn't. I didn't get a Woodford. It was they didn't have it. I was like, dang it. Uh, Woodford Double Oak is my usual go-to for Woodford. I need to try that. That's the one that I need to try. Oh next. man, the, you you want all of the sweetness and none of the bite? Get Double Oaked. It's worth the extra. But I like the bite. I don't like the sweetness. I like it when it has like a bite to it. Not not like Jim Beam. That's like hey. Uh, That's not that well. Jim Beam's not bourbon. Jim Beam is Tennessee uh, sour mash whiskey, pretending to be Kentucky bourbon. Let's get one. Yeah, clear. It, Jim Beam is like uh, when you take a shot. It's like mm -hmm. wannabe ever or not ever clear. Although that's a big kick to the nuts. Um, what is it? Moonshine. Mm -hmm. That moonshine will put will drop you to your knees, and you will start praying to God. Like, that's what I think. When we all get to heaven, we all get to our knees and praise God. He's just going to mm -hmm. give us all a shot of moonshine. We're just going <laughs> to that That way. That's what, that that's what it, it feels up. like. It's like I did the whole I did the whole um, redneck shot where it's in a mason jar and you chug it. Yep. Uh, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. um, well, never have you ever thought uh, I should just not drink ever again. And also, what the hell's going on right now? Because your legs just go. You get the jelly legs for sure. It's like you're yeah. on like loose suspension. Yeah, loose that suspension. Makes you know how to make drinks, man. It's not the Irish. I have a guy who makes my own moonshine. I have a guy who mm. makes my own moonshine. And let me tell you, when I'm drinking that, I one mason jar. As uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm much more of a casual drinker now, and not just straight out. Yeah. Drinking. One mason jar, I can I can carry that thing for a month and a half. Yeah, you don't. You, ooh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. And that's twenty dollars yeah. worth of just straight grain liquor. I love moonshine. It's mm -hmm. so good. It's it'll put hair on your body where you never thought you would have hair on your body. Really, my armpits? Yeah. I just I'm, I'm kidding. Well, clearly, it hasn't <laughs> got it hasn't gotten to my head, so it's you know. Now I'm losing mine too. Uh, welcome to the party, pal. But uh, I, uh, yeah, so that's another aspect in Fallout that I like too. Like whenever I'm like role playing as you know myself, whenever regardless of what game I'm playing, I always have to have a drink in my hand. And uh, another thing that Fallout uh, Four lacks is legitimate alcoholism and legitimate penalty for being a boozer. So I tried that in in Mass Effect Three. <laughs> Well, That's okay, how... so... Oh, sorry, you can... No, go ahead, go ahead. I will say this. Fallout 3 is my favorite. It's the, actually the only game I ever played. Well, then you were you were just enjoying the show then when I was dicking around in the vault there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
It's... I'm going to make that into a whole series. I'm going to make that into a whole Let's Play. And, of course, whenever I do the Let's Plays, I record it ahead of time. I release it as an instant premiere on YouTube. That way I can interact with my chat. And I record over the gameplay. So basically how I got it set up is I will explain what I'm doing when I'm doing it. So I play the game for like two or three hours. Then I go back and I record commentary over that for two to three hours. Then I compile that into a video and then I upload it as an instant premiere. That way I can talk with my chat. See, I should do that. Yeah. <laughs> See, I would do it with Call of Duty. COD's a lot quicker to play through, though. As you know, oh, there's I haven't seen a good COD campaign since Black Ops. Black Ops 2 has a good campaign. But it's that futuristic shit, man. Yeah, yeah I know. But see, this is, I think, I'd be down to doing a live stream of playing Call of Duty with other people uh -huh. yeah. and streaming that. That would be fun. Now, you would have to hold in a lot of things you would say because. Uh, uh, well, well, you got to remember, you would have to like close, you would have to like close the, the server so that we don't get the random kids, you know, yelling at us. No, saying, you would just play it with like, you get, four, you get four guys and then you would right. just. You would play that. It's all pre-recorded. Um, you would just have someone film it. I don't know how. Then you would get on the computer, but you would just film yourself playing with other people, and then that's how it would work. You would. It's like four on four. Like your four, your three close friends that you're playing with, and then mm -hmm. none of the lobby stuff because it's all stupid. But yeah. I don't really play much video games anymore. It's mainly Call of Duty. If I want to go, I play 30 minutes, put the bots all easy, and see how I do. I well, usually do about 700 this kills. This was something minutes. that I was tooling around. I was just, you know, shaking the nickel in the tin can, letting it tumble around in my head for a little bit. But uh, Fallout 76 without randos, and I've already paid for Fallout first. So anybody that would join my server would just be part of my squad and then we could fuck around together. And it could also be part of the Fallout content that I plan on producing for this channel down the road. Because like I said, you go back to the beginning of the stream, just, just the expositioning, the singing. I did sing a couple songs. I was like, well, I guess this is a diet matinee since I didn't know where Snail was. I guess we'll turn this into a diet matinee and I'll sing some songs and do some bits and... I still just ended up basically explaining Fallout, like the the, the, pr the prologue leading up to, you know, the, it really boils back down, like I said at the beginning of the show, the biggest, most integral part of the difference between the two universes of ours and the fictional world of Fallouts is the transistor was never invented. Exactly. Important and point. The most, the, the pentultimate. The mm -hmm. most important point. Digital technology never became a thing because the transistor was never invented. Japan never recovered and started their electronics factories. The microchip will never have been born. And the, here we are. And because Japan still gets the bombs dropped on them. The Hiroshima and Nagasaki event still occurs. But since the invention of the transistor and the push-pull uh, electronics aspects of it, of digital circuitry, parallel circuitry, that, that, that doesn't happen in any instance. And so we diverge into this atomic era where everything is just running on the atom. Like the alarm clock runs on... A nuclear element. Your alarm clock going off in the morning, you slam that fucker and get up. That's running on a nuclear element. Your toaster running on a nuclear element. Your television, as radioactive as your parents would say that they'll burn your fucking eyes out. Kind of like CRT radioactive television. All, all runs on a little bit of that uranium and it's it's really awesome, like just the the retro futuristic and the robotics that we get from it. They somehow Fantastic. still are able to create personable, personable artificial intelligence, not just artificial intelligence, 
but personable it, artificial intelligence. The Mr. Handy Robot is Jarvis with a buzzsaw. I'm not making this up. Well, and, and you have uh, Madame Curie. She, yeah. she has a personality. All, you can read her pers personality evolving yeah. throughout your adventures. You know, the robots are capable of learning, but for some odd reason, none of them made the leap to Skynet it's almost as if they just wanted to th – there is some robots that wanted to basically break off and do their own thing. Hell, I think in Fallout 2, there's a colony that's just ran by robots, robots that just want to be doing their own thing. Oh, well, um, you have that in Fallout 4, too. Yeah, so, you know, but they never, like – because there was no real internet, because there was no real access to nuclear codes – the robots never had the the incentive to go, okay, well, mankind is a threat to our existence. Let's nuke it. Yeah. But they are still capable of learning and computing through learning and, and, and becoming, you know. But it's rare. Right. It's yeah. rare that they become kind of sentient. But. Yeah, well, I mean, but you have Codsworth. He had a ding. He said, I had a ding on the old chromometer. So at some point, Codsworth gets hit by a raider with probably a blunt object, right? Mm -hmm. And just like Goku cracking his head in Dragon Ball, and not he goes against the Saiyan programming of a, wiping out all of the indigenous life, right? And wants to protect the planet and makes his own decisions. And in the same way that Codsworth's like, okay, I get it. Uh, you're the only person in my life that means anything to me because when you pulled me out of the box and turned me on and registered your name with me, you know, I'm supposed to serve you. But then he goes 200 years without batting, batting a lens, trying to keep the house clean, even though that, that was a futile endeavor. <laughs> He did his best. He did his best. And we admire him so for it. Yeah. But then as soon as you return, it's like that 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 little chronom that little cogitator clicked. And he started going, oh, you know, as you build your relationship with him, he's just like, at first I thought this is just what General Atomics wanted, but now I know truly legitimately that I want to help you any way I can, and that's my decision. Mm-hmm. And that's all done with the kind of circuits that were made with bundles of wires and duct tape on the inside of the machine. Exactly. <laughs> like, and a cuckoo clock. And a cuckoo clock and the occasional hamster on the wheel. <laughs> Some Lou Goldberg shit spritzed throughout. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like, very, very passionate about this world. I love everything about Fallout. And, and this is why I am so worried about the TV show, because what right. I saw, I'm not against. Let me make that clear. I'm not against that it doesn't look that lived in. Because one of my questions that I always had when I was streaming Fallout 4 mm -hmm. was exactly how would a nuclear wasteland look 200 years after the fact? And then we go and look at um, a Chernobyl, and it's not bad. Uh, a few of the birds have a mutation, uh, mm. and that is they produce one white tail feather. They're black birds, but they produce one white tail feather. White tail feather. Life finds a way. Believe it, it or does. Not. And some of them have uh, evolved immunity to, I think, some types of uh, cancer. Mm-hmm. And a few other mutations, but that's about it. But in the TV show, it's pretty bright. There's nothing grimy about it. It really just looks like a set, basically. It's got to be East Coast then. And let me explain to you why I think that. I do have some theories, all right? Yeah. So, obviously, we got uh, Harold from Fallout 2 that had the uh, tree growing on his head, mm -hmm. right? Now, in Fallout 3, Harold has, at this point, burdened this tree to the point that it has rooted itself 
into the soil and has started to clean the soil for one because he's basically a walking geck. Harold is a walking geck. So when this tree rooted itself into the soil in West Virginia, well, Pennsylvania, technically, at the uh, northern end of Pennsylvania, what we see is a forest of completely restored trees growing. And then you have in the Institute synthetically assisted biotech trees that are that are all they're all deciduous, but they're going through their seasonal changes. They're growing leaves, they're living, they're alive. So there is these little pockets of nature restoring itself. And I think that one of the canonical decisions in Fallout 3 is that the lone wanderer decides to uh, accelerate the heart instead of kill Harold, which would, over time, start to spread out the forests of Oasis. Because as the soil is cleaned, those trees are going to spread out of that little grotto and out into the greater countryside of Pennsylvania, combined with Project Purity now churning out pure water on the southern end by the Potomac out into the Atlantic. You have a combination of fresh organic material that will slowly start to greenify the District of Columbia. Then you go up to Massachusetts... One of the mods that I've installed into my Fallout 4 as the master of the Institute is having the ability to grow synth trees and to start bringing some green back into Massachusetts. Nice shark teeth you got there. Well, thank you. And um, I long think story short, you know, on, right? Mm -mm. No, no, what? these are these are molds from Jaws, I think. Yeah. Spice up the show, shall we? <laughs> Dude, Jeff Wyatt and I did this bit. He did uh, Bruce the Gay Shark when we did our watch party for the first Stark Week. Uh, hey! He was like, I'm just gonna eat you now. Is that okay? I like <laughs> your what? I like your what? Me. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, that the, the fact that, you know, the Fallout it, the show looks a little more green. That don't that don't bother me as much, given the events leading up to it. If it's on the East Coast, West Coast, not so much. That's a fucking desert, and it needs to stay a desert, <laughs> like a radioactive hellhole desert. But that that's why we go back and, and look at Chernobyl. It is green, plenty mm -hmm. green. Mm-hmm. Chernobyl also has the similar fallout ratios of a low yield atomic detonation. Uh, so the strontium 90 and the radioactive material that uh, dispersed throughout is very concentrated, very hot in some places, but uh, life still finds a way uh, to quote uh, Jeff Goblin. It's a life. Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, if Mm, no, finds a way. <laughs> this is what probably my worst impersonation. I know I tried to open that up whenever we were doing the whenever we were reviewing the fly and pop culture breakdown with Doomcock, but uh, it fell flat. So my Jeff Goldblum's not anywhere near as good as some of my guys, but uh, you know, <laughs> life. Um, oh. Well, uh, insect politician. <laughs> Another thing we have to take into account about the Fallout world. Yes. And this, I was just thinking about what Steve said about uh, music. I got you back. Is the music in Fallout? It's amazing. It's truly amazing. Well, let's discuss how the music survived the passage of time. One of the recording media's that is in Fallout is called the Hollow Tape, which is a tape that uses a strip of magnetically encased photons to emulate a magnetic reel 
of regular tape and therefore is capable of recording so much more data by default. Don't ask me how they're able to have this holographic photon barrier and how the tape is designed to just keep recorded data. It loads yeah, don't like ask questions. <laughs> it loads like an 8-track. The, the Pip-Boy slot on it, they're about the size of an 8-track tape, too. Mm -hmm. But for some odd reason, the scientists, with their with their wonder science, you know, are just able to slot a hollow tape in and through magnetically encased light record things like we do on our audio cassettes. And still plays out over a radio medium, over a, a radio medium of a Nixie tube speaker. So anything that is below 300 hertz or 7,000 hertz starts to bottom out. So it gets that retro sound coming through. So that's the reason why a lot of the hollow tape recordings of stuff from decades past, the 30s and the 20s, sound just okay. They sound they sound as if they were recorded on a vinyl or whatever because they were recorded with that spectrum of sound gain and attack speed. And so that's what I like about their choice of music, just the, you know, the ink spots, the, you know, the, all that stuff. Like it's, I old. don't want to set the world on. That's fire. why I like the radio demon so much is because he speaks in Nixie tube. He speaks in AM radio. And I'm, and as somebody who's a sucker for the golden age of radio, who is a sucker for it. I, I latched onto that character like stink on shit. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> not going to lie. I latched onto that character like stink on shit. Saber the Doom Squirrel says, I have a pit boy. I need to show it next time. Well, have dog meat carry it up here, and we will definitely show that off. I will go out on a limb and say I have pre-ordered the diecast pit boy uh, 101 model. Uh, alarm, uh, basically glorified alarm clock. Of course I did. Yeah, you listen, 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 listen. You nerd. I am a nerd. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I'm here to bust your balls, and I'm going to enjoy every second of it. Well, you may find that your yields have diminishing returns because I've already spooged all over your face. Wait, what? I'm sorry. Um, That's a little what? <laughs> well, how the tables have turned. Oh, how the tables have turned. <laughs> Do it him whatever you like. <laughs> Don't get too Love excited it. now. <laughs> Hashtag slipperies. But at least we agree that, that the music in Fallout 4 is amazing. Yes. Yes. I'm a sucker um, for it. Me too. Me too. Why do you think I, I worked alongside Brad and Redding for the Old World Radio mod? My name is actually attached to one of the scripts for Adam Cat's radio. He found somebody that sounded just like Rowdy from the Adam Cats. I wrote that script. Hmm. I'm on that radio script. I'm on that mod. <laughs> I love this music by default. So whenever I heard it in Fallout 3, I'm like, I know this tune. I know this tune. I love this tune. Well, I kind of grew up in a record store, and of course, yeah. it was mostly uh, 60s, 70s music I, I listened to, right? Uh, because my it was my dad's record store, we actually lived in the back room, so I did grow up in the record store. And later, uh, he had a record store with another guy, and it was more bluesy and, and some back to the 50s, and we had... Uh, an American car and was a member of the American car club. And of course it's rockabilly, all this. We went out to car right. shows, you get the fifties, um, uh, American music. And it was amazing okay. listening to that all day, watching really cool custom cars. So it's, to me, it's just kind of nostalgia, but also I just think it's the best thing in the world. I love how, there was a time like nowadays when we look, when we say the word car or automobile, we just think of the necessity of the need for a vehicle. We don't, we don't, we don't romanticize it like we used to. And, and, you know, we used to, we used to take care of our cars. That's another reason why I still think that the guy in the suburb from that Americana suburbia era of time that was locked 
would be the guy that would also know the ins and out of his automobile. Uh, if you, if you know, you compare a car from now to a car 40 years ago, obviously you're going to go, Hey, there was a time when there was pride put into manufacturing this machine, this machine we could personify. We call her, her, or she's a beaut or give her a nickname. You know, we used to mm -hmm. take really high pride in our automobile automobiles. And now, you know, nowadays it's like, yeah, okay, it's it's a Ford Focus. Big deal. Well, they were also very expensive, and you had to take really good care of it. Today, yeah. it's like uh, my TV. If, if one pixel is dead, I'm going to toss out the TV and, and get a new one. Right. 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 But uh, truth is, we had the same CRT TV for like 20, 30 years in my old, mm -hmm. growing up, until we got a new one. Mm -hmm. And back then, you actually had TV repair shops. So again, you took care of your stuff, and that's why you had more of an attachment to it. Mm -hmm. Cars used to be a work of art as well as a, a, a marvel of engineering. Oh, let me uh, find you a picture. And and when we talk about art and cars, and uh, we, there are a few things we need. There are. Mm -hmm. Let me just find it for you. Just uh, talk amongst yourselves. I'm gonna find it. Because that, that's one thing I love about the old cars, the round shapes. And they intentionally um, decide cars to be rounded like women. That was intentionally. Yeah, that was the curve. Unless it's, it's a curse. Subaru. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Lesbo car. <laughs> let's, all be, let's, all, let's be honest here. Let's, let's banana. <laughs> Any anyone who drives a Subaru, I'm sorry. You're whether you're. You a know, man we used to say woman, the same thing about Lesbo. people. That used, to, you used to say the same thing about people that drove a Saturn. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, you're right. Look at that. Ooh. Oh damn! All I see look at that up. suicide I, doors. God damn! I just peed a little. See, why? Where is this? What? Where's the Art Deco automobile? Where is this? Yeah, why that's not a real car. From this? That's a concept. I, I'm yeah. a sucker for a fastback. No, you don't understand. If I had a classic vehicle choice, it has to be a fastback like this. It has to go down to the street. That that car to me is like you're compensating for something. <laughs> Too long. No, 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 man. I drive no, no, no. man. Work. That is driving in art. Oh, it's that yeah, it's is uh, it's that should make your heart pound. Yeah, it makes something else pound, but we won't go there. <laughs> yeah, are you peeing a little too? Could just be the I. I, th <laughs> I got nothing out of that one. You're on your own. <laughs> you just okay. Can't help it. Breaking man. news. Tony Stark oh. pees over cars. What? <laughs> I do. Occasionally but, I cry and pee for, for, for you guys out there. But it's just an I'm example of, of how we used to design cars, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now absolutely. they all pretty much look alike. Yeah, they have, that's because like, now a car is looked at as an, a utility or an appliance instead of something to be proud to own. Mm -hmm. Now, here's my question for you guys. Okay, since we're getting to cars, my wheelhouse. I love cars. Now, have you guys seen the new Cybertruck? Yes. Yes, and I think what it's an ugly-ass vehicle. Here's the thing. All right, let me look this up. I agreed until I saw this. And I'm going to try to look it up. I am a sucker for the Cybertruck. I'm never going to buy an electric car. For obvious reasons, but it's there's something that Elon does that he makes the cars look kind of hideous, and then it's just like, ooh, there's a little. Hold on, let me let me see. If is I can this find is it. this the part where I make Rake or Steve mad and tell him that uh, one of the first cars I plan on wrecking in my post-apocalyptic races is a Cybertruck? No. Okay. Where is it? You're gonna see a Cybertruck get fucked up by some raiders and and big ass. Well, here's stuff. hold up. I have actually okay. I have one question. Yeah. So yeah. you're you're gonna you're gonna destroy a Cybertruck. 
Right. I'm going to be doing my best to survive while driving in an apocalyptic death race against guys who are in vehicles capable of destroying a cyber truck. Yes. And you by do default, know that truck is like bulletproof to a certain point. It's right? bulletproof. What the fuck is that? It's awesome. That's what it is. Dude, that's that's get your free candy right there, baby. How you doing? It's the A team. Come on. I know what it's it is, but if it slaps me, it, if it slapped, if it slaps free candy, I'm going in that truck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm aware that the cyber truck is bulletproof. I don't care. I'm aware that the cyber truck is bulletproof, but it's not gonna be uh you know vehicles twice its size proof. <laughs> All right, I'm getting hold up. There's where is it? Oh, not that picture. Here we go. All right. This right here. Hmm. Let me get it pulled up for you so you can bring it up. This made me like the Cybertruck more. Okay. Is that the commercial where it looks more rugged and it's doing its like vamp through the desert? Yeah. It's that one? Yeah. Where's the second? All right. Look at this thing. This thing is awesome. Yeah, give me a still shot of it. That way I don't play it, uh, you know, as a commercial. Yeah. Okay. And you wonder that why. Wonder is, is. <clears throat> that is the coolest looking thing right there. Well, wow. why do you think That's I want to put it through a list. post-apocalyptic death race? It's already got the look. Yeah. It's so cool looking. Now, would I ever buy it? No. But in a post-apocalypse, I would definitely snag it because not many people are going to have 50 cal calibers. Mm -hmm. That Which withstands. 50 calibers, 50 calibers cut through anything like butter. That's, you know. Well, yeah. But that can withstand an AR round too. Yeah. Well, that can restart. You're good. It can handle 5.56. Five, I don't know about 7.62, but no, I think. No, I saw some guys test it, and, and all it took was a uh, 9 mil. Yeah. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. Okay. So but, nine, you know, some of them might be better. I don't know. But the, all they it stopped for them was a 9 mil. <laughs> but it's cool. It's a cool car, man. I yeah, and you wonder why I want you wonder why I want my debut death race to be a in the desert and be against other Mad Max cars. Now you know that now, right, Steve? <laughs> yeah. But it's see, then I would just I would own a muscle car. I would just go Mad Max. His yeah. Car, that's it. Yeah. I'd rather have a Pontiac four four zero or any any day of the week. Like you know. Well, I would get the DeLorean and I would drop the muscle car engine in it. I would do like you'd a have VA. to put it in the back. Well, yeah, I would just make yeah. that sucker lift it. Oh yeah. Did you see the uh, DeLorean with the monster truck wheels? Have you seen that yeah. around? That's like an old picture from the way back when times of the uh, internet. I actually it's, think I have a picture of Steve here when uh, he's cosplaying and watching those cars. Oh, here we go. What? Mm -hmm. What have we got? Yeah, there you go. Yep. Hey. Yep. Yep. Hey. Yeah. That's not me too. Either. Hashtag me too. Hashtag me too. Me too. Um, me too. You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not me wrong, too. buddy. I love cars, man. I almost, when I was in um, high school, I was 17. I had a buddy that restored his dad restored a 67 Camaro and he was going to give it to me for 13,000 just because I knew him and I didn't have the money. And I was like, dang it, but I got to drive it. Oh yeah. Doom squirrel. Uh, I have to show you the vehicle that you're going to participate in the death race with. It's pretty cool. It's called the Doozer. It's nuts. It's a modified forklift with a, a blade uh, instead of the forks, and it's got eyes painted on it like a squirrel's. And uh, it's it's your car in the death races. I think you'll like it. It's it's not Frankenstein. So no, like, I know what it is. Over a lot, you're gonna run over a lot of heads with it. You're gonna you're gonna get a lot of points uh, with this vehicle. I think you'll like it. I think you'll like the uh, end product. Um, cool I thing know about what it is. Is. Uh, the cool thing about Carmageddon 
at the end of the day is it's so easy to model custom cars. And so I get any old car model and I just, you know, slap like extra armor on it and blades in the front or spikes. Instant, instant death race car. Instant death race. I know what Doom Squirrel's car is. Hold on. Don't make me model it. <laughs> oh, no. This, this is race is. is next week. This is what it is. This race <clears throat> is next week, so. No, this is it, man. Right okay. here. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Why nobody? Deaky, deaky. But make it a squirrel. Why not go up? Why not go down? Those two T's looks like an, an M. It does. Uh, the Dumb and Dumber van. That the, wasn't oh, that. Oh, that's wasn't I that never God? noticed that. Holy yeah. crap, dude! Wasn't that a God? <laughs> oh my God! God <laughs> You're right. Van? Oh, it's been what? How many years? No. Yeah. Oh, that right. changes everything, doesn't it? Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, that's well done. Why to go? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. I cannot. Oh, yeah, that's you know. Yeah, comes. yeah, comes in all different sizes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could probably dogify or squirrelify an old Dodge B250. I could probably work something like we're that. calling it. We have worms. <laughs> hey, that's cool. That's really cool. That's pretty cool. And that's like what you need in the wasteland. <laughs> yeah. You need little trinkets like this. Things that are aesthetic and wild. Mm -hmm. For sure. For no, sure. so I'm, my, I'm, my I'm a sucker. Yeah, oh, what, go what ahead. Are you gonna say? No, you can go. Uh, I'm just a sucker for, for uh, these things, for the apocalypse. When you can go wild and, and the aesthetics of the cars that I showed you, the first uh, car. Mm -hmm. That That's... Uh, that's my, well, you know the uh, roadster that they put on Meatloaf's albums with two engines? You know I put that in the game. Again, sucker for fast bags. What can I say? All right, guys. This is my all-time. This is my apocalypse car. All right. You guys ready I'm for this? Looking forward to it. This is it, guys. This is the best apocalypse. Okay, Ranker Steve. Here we go. <laughs> Is that an AMC? Is that That's an a AMC? Geo Metro? Uh, <laughs> Geo Metro. So worse. Got it. All uh, you gotta do is you just get you just get a Cadillac Coupe DeVille and put that in the trunk. You got two cars. <laughs> yeah, I hate to be the bear, uh, bad news, Ranker Steve. But if I were to make that car to statistics and put it in one of my death races, the first vehicle that that plows into it's probably gonna wreck it um i had a buddy that put a v8 <laughs> engine in it um mm -hmm. the car blew up a v8 like, just what uh, you, like a v8 in an amc or in a neo geo metro you put it in a geo metro okay no, relationship goals yes yes <laughs> yep amen preach it brother <laughs> <laughs> Suck it. Suck That's it. how it has to be. Yeah. I'm tired of having 18 inches on the on the bed of sleeping. <laughs> I mean, it's like when you get married, it's like you're gonna get 18 inches and that's all you're gonna deal with. Okay, cool. Eight years almost and still. <sighs> and Doom Scroll, he wants uh, plasma guns uh on his uh mutt mobile well my my uh death races are more akin to uh, an apocalypse from our timeline so if you want to figure out how to put the power of the sun into a plasma cell you're more than welcome to do that but at the end of the day it's a more of a demolition derby and less of a twisted metal experience so you're best you're better off just armor plating your vehicle and praying nobody crushes you in, in my death races Run over pedestrians. The whole point is to run over pedestrians. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Well, well we have somebody in office uh, say that uh, visibility in this particular endeavor 
uh, must be adhered to. So thank you, Snail, for adhering to our Lord and Master, uh, Sleepy You're welcome. Joe. This um, is our LGTG plus minus uh, segment. Well, I mean, which one is the female port? Which one's the male port? And does it take an aux cord? Uh, that's my next question. How much you want to know? <laughs> you sound as if you're an expert in this regard. <laughs> I may know some plugs. <laughs> plug it in, plug it in. Plug it in, plug Not it in. Not that one. Well, we're not trying to die here. Jeez. So uh, back to Fallout Four. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We've gone yeah. down of we've gone down the whole path of Tony Stark peeing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's that's clipping I'm... through. Uh, yeah, they, uh, exactly. That's, yeah. That's the most unstable shelving I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> cool. Well, well, it it's either Swiss or. It's from Bethesda. It just works either way. No, uh, no, no. That's shout out our friends. That's shout out our friends at IKEA. We see. No, you. that's a Californian, some beta who doesn't know what they're doing, and then <laughs> they're like, "It's art." No, that's shit. It's geek chic. It, it is. Geek you can't. Geek. Uh, <laughs> stupid. A oh, lot of mercy. Load of be, load of be with the romance is done. Cheers. It's gonna be my last drink for the for a while. Uh we'll yeah. go ahead and we'll start winding down. Uh um, well, I, I want to go back to, to uh the trailer just one moment. Yes, yes, by all means. Uh do you have some screenshots of that? I'd rather not just play I don't I, I don't have screenshots, trailer. but what I was thinking about should was we, should um we do, should we just play the trailer and do the six second rule or the four second rule and just stop it? I think we no. should. Okay. okay. Oh. I'm not a big fan of stopping it and stuff, but you can do that. That's your show. Do whatever you well, want. Well, I, I kind of sort of just want to do this breakdown with screenshots. All right. We can do that. I'd, ra I'd rather just wait till we actually it's have your it. Show. It's your show. It's your show. I'm like, I don't know, because you're monetized on YouTube, so I'm kind of like, mm, but yeah, go for it. Yeah, that, that's that's the exact hey, same. You do you on your show. I'll do my stripping on my show. What? <laughs> Cash out. No. But, um, but uh, you know, yeah, we can I do just, a breakdown. I, I don't. I don't yeah, know we'll why do I have a stick up my butt um, right now. I'm the old man right now. Don't do that. Oh, um, just before we do that, I have something in regards to your channel, Steve. Maybe you can use this. Oh boy, what is it now? There you go, for your man show. You can truly call yourself peaceful unless you're capable of great violence. If you, ooh, if you're not capable of violence, you're not peaceful. You're harmless. Important. That's a good one. Ooh, yeah. I love. You know, that's me. That's me in a full suit of armor tending to the cat. <laughs> Make it a dog, and we got ourselves a deal. <laughs> that's of the devil in my opinion although i'm you can that. say whatever you want my hive will eat me when i die it's here's the thing as you're getting the trailer ready um cats don't give a crap about the human race they don't they don't care about anything they own us dogs will lie next to you when you like they'll sense something wrong so dogs go yeah well, I, I, I uh, like cats a lot because uh, they are the masters of the universe. I'm Egyptian, Someone created so I an, an infinity engine <laughs> with a cat. What you do is you take a piece of toast and butter it, and then you put that on the cat because a cat will always land on, on his feet, and a buttered toast will always land on the buttered side. So that way you have an infinity engine, and that's how you create power. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to do a trailer react, and we're going to go ahead and throw out the disclaimer in the stream now that what we are doing is our best to modify the base footage uh, as well as commentate on it through forms of reactions. We are not attempting to monetize off of this footage in any way, and if anything, we are advertising your product. And with that disclaimer out of the way, we are going to adhere to the four-second rule. 
Let me so, wear my Amazon Prime shirt and be a bit <laughs> Oh my gosh. I do have buddies that worked on this show and they're not telling me anything, which gives me a clue of like this is dog crap. Yeah, and and so basically I'm going to get past this first section here. We are going to turn on closed captioning. <clears throat> And turn the volume. In case all the way you down. can't see, we have closed captioning, and we're gonna mute it. So good luck. That's a dark humor joke. <laughs> Why, hello there. A wonderful place. See this? Okay, this is the problem I have with this show right here. Is Walter Goggins is in this show? Oh my gosh. I They're think Walter gonna... Doggins is kind of like trying to do a Rod Serling thing here. Right here, I I was I was hyped for this part right here when yeah. he showed up. I because of righteous gemstones and everything he's in. Mm -hmm. And then it's like eh, in the trailer, the rest of the trailer, I'm like, this is <laughs> stupid. But him right here, I'm like, dang. All right, he exudes fifties right there. Oh yeah, yeah. It's. I will say this. It's done beautifully. It's the aesthetics are right there. I mean, you see a veritable cam Camelot of the nuclear age, right now. What year do you think? Oh, never mind. It's all set in. The, never mind. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen this trailer. Cool. You haven't. This, is, this no. is the official trailer. We're doing the official trailer breakdown. Um, Get ready to be butt hurt. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it gets it gets bad about it's a so way in. stupid. <laughs> Look at that, all them homos. Oh, this is uh Fallout 76. Very Fallout 76 looking, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And you see it's coming over the you know the right the black and white because again where the transistor was never invented color television could not take place because there is no diode allocation another technological detail that they did that they got right how do they do the green screen then no oh, it's easy pip boy it's a, it's, a, it's a green screen on a cathode a singular cathode for a computer so they can they, you can make a mono car, you can make a monochrome of any one diode that you want, oh, okay. but it's still monochromatic. But. It's green screen is a lot easier to do, but mm -hmm. they would they would just use that TV and then they would just put green screen um material over it and then light it. And oh, that's how they would do that. Oh, I'm, I'm just that's thinking the, the green you, you have on the Pip Boy that's a green text, yeah, it's not black and white, it's a green mm -hmm. text. No. It's green. It's it's monochromatic green. Uh, Snail, oh. does this remind you of Point Lookout? That's what I'm getting from this. That's Santa Monica. Yeah, but I'm saying <sighs> like the Point Lookout DLC is no. Uh, that's San Diego. Sorry. Is that San Diego? Or is that Santa Monica? No, it's not. No, it is Santa Monica. Sorry, yes, it is. That is yeah, Santa Monica. It's the, it's, it's the Ferris wheel by the pier. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's in the, it's in the West Coast. It's in yeah, it looks like it's taking place in Shady Sands, so we're definitely in California. So when I can. I if I'm going to spend that many hours playing a character, I want to look at a female ass, not a guy's ass. <laughs> now, here's a, now, here's a question. How many of you guys, when you play the game, you would pick the females? Here, I do. Oh, dude, all the time. It's It really depends on if I'm role-playing a character or if I want a character to look good at and occasionally you know, allocate my blood flow to another part of my body. And I give her a set of double Ds. That's the least I can do for her. Triple Ds, baby. <laughs> oh my in case God. she has to go in the water. She's floating, baby. <laughs> <laughs> We're pigs. Definitely. And single. Now, hey, my now, <laughs> that there is a stim pack. That's now the thing, just just for a little context. That is your one-stop shop for medicinal needs. That is some kind of like agent it's that allows you to regenerate wounds, even <clears throat> if you've got like a fatal gunshot wound and you're bleeding out of your heart. You stick that damn thing in there like an EpiPen and it accelerates your body to regenerate and repair itself in that section. Now, systolic shock aside... That is some crazy ass wonder science that we will never have in this day and age. 
That's nanobots and stem cells, my dude. That's just it's it's I think it's more chemical and less nano because you got it's nanobots. Steroids. And, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> actually, no, it will cure gunshot chub wounds. So there's, there's talk that the Stimpak technology has also been rooted in the FEV research because of how they're able to just map the genome and manipulate the parts of the genome to accelerate healing with this medicine. And that was part of the founding chemical uh, research into the forced evolutionary virus. It looks like a rectal tool. You could jab it into anywhere. <laughs> like the hill. Look at and that. They ruin it. I like the hat. See, I would be that guy right there, but I would they, not be they, that They had to change him so he wasn't too ghastly to look at for people because they have so to draw what we're audience. saying is that this guy has undergone maybe 20 years of ghoulification then. He's yeah. a young-ass ghoul. But I thought that whenever they was explaining it that he was like a pre-war ghoul. But no pre-war ghoul looks like this. No, but as I said, what I heard from, from the studio is they didn't want to turn off people to him, so they didn't make him too doesn't know a thing about the world. And she has to, to learn. Is if that a Miss Danny? That's a Miss so that we can get the Holy crap, the is the blonde job. pregnant? The blonde looks pregnant. Ugh, that's one ugly pregnant. Like, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, Megan Fox make was in a wife beater too. So yeah, well, maybe Megan Fox, Fox was showing off side boob in that wife beater. Most and of she these wore she wore like nowadays. tiny shorts with no yeah. underwear underneath. How do oh. I know? Color correction, baby. <laughs> All right, now we get to see some brotherhood action. It looks like. Let's see these T forty fives. Looks like the Pridwin is in action, so we know mm -hmm. that the brother. They're taking they're taking vibes from both east and west coast here. So this yeah. is obviously yeah. on the west coast. And we see, like, you know, New Vegas aesthetic, but then we see forests with cars from the East Coast. I don't know, man. Unless unless Vault 21's uh, rabbit plant life really kicked it into high gear. Okay, go rewind. Go back. Hold up. Go, 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 go back. Go back a few seconds. All right, stop there. Play it. Just play it. That must be some kind of big ass pistol to do that. All right, a twenty-two cannot do that. Is that a twenty-two? Yes, that's a twenty-two. Well, no he does gun is, in the world can. Twenty-two is the only one, from my knowledge, that can you can pull it back and shoot like that. And it, and it went this. no, that's a different kind of gun because look at that exit wound. <clears throat> but he's using a twenty-two gun, so it's some kind but of it's modified, gun. right? It, well, it's, it's be, yeah, it's modified, but that's do you realize look at that, exit wound. that is not from a 22. Hell, I, I own no, a 327 and I don't make exit wounds thing. that big. Unless in the show he actually talks about the gun. The problem I have with any movie now with mm -hmm. guns is they never talk about the guns, and then you see it. That's a shotgun wound. That's a shotgun blast to the chest. Yeah. Yes. Up and then close. that's a 50 cal. That's a 50 cal wound with a shotgun blast with a 22. Explain that one to me. Because <laughs> unless that it has rocker propelled vault issue 10 millimeters, I don't. What? Is that supposed to be the vault issue 10 millimeter? That looks like a ray gun. What the fuck? No, it's that, a that's a, uh, you know, it's a dark a gun. With Ranger. A it's a syringer, okay. Yeah, mod well, it's a syringer gun, a handgun. Tranquilizer gun, basically. Oh, so they equipped her with a trank gun. And yeah. Miss Wife Beater plus trank gun is supposed to handle these cannibals, maniacs, and ghouls? Okay. She doesn't know any better. And that's the thing I can accept about this. She doesn't know right. any better because she, she grew up in a vault. So that's very sheltered, of course. So I like that aspect. I'm not too critical about it. Mm -hmm. I, I have to give them some space to to do ability there. Looks like we got some enclave units or raiders. I don't know. That's a Laz pistol. That ain't uh, that's a girl boss. I'm <clears throat> yeah, the girl boss. Here. Yeah. 
But if she's oh, cool, wow. I'm okay with it. Wow, a television with 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 a receiving signal. Okay, here we go. This this is the kind of footage I want to see. I want to see the the A bomb here. Ooh, that's and that's about Taco that's. A, and that's a, that's about how the Hiroshima bomb looked. That that's the similar yield. So they got that right too. Well, depict it. There you mm-hmm. go. Yeah, he definitely got that yeah. West Coast survivor. Like that's what I like about New Vegas. I figured you'd like New Vegas more, uh, Rank or Steve, because there's a lot. I haven't more played it yet. There's a lot more emphasis on cowboys and the uh, Wild West in that. I think you'd like that. I you can like walk around it. with a duster and fan the hammer and all kinds of stuff. All right. Well, oh, is he taking drugs so he can stay not too coolified? Yes. Is that what he's, he's doing? He's not that coolified, though. Th- that's because of the drugs he's doing. Well, what? So okay. he won't decay. Is he a pre war ghoul? There, patch out, lady. It's like, you yeah, know, Sarah in a sleeveless shirt nonchalantly flexing just because you're a woman well interesting trailer i dread it i dread every bit of it um i don't i i have some hope i, I have some hope for it uh, but I, I, I it's already laid too many crumbs out maybe it's just <laughs> like oh my radars are just the last thing i want <laughs> is for my one of my beloved franchises to get this treatment I've seen it happen to Transformers. Hell, it happened to Transformers before it had anywhere it got near Star Wars or Star Trek. That shit was happening in like 2013, 2014. It did it to my Transformers. It did it to to Star Wars and Trek. It did Wait. it to Marvel. They you couldn't do like, this by Fallout. They're you didn't like the Transformers out. movies? I liked the first one because it was a it was a good summer blockbuster. But I'm not talking about the movies. I'm talking about what they did to the IDW comics and introducing oh, bestest, yeah. a bestest ever uh, a femme you know, called Windblade that can cut through a combiner in one cleave because she's the bestest ever. Come on now. Hail to Tim. Good to see you, Tim. Hail to Susan Dolan. Hail to Hello. Tim. See you. Hello, hello. What we got here? Here you go. The thing that that's now. Wait, have you seen? Have you guys seen the new Aliens trailer? No. The new Aliens trailer? Yeah. Oh. It looks like they're going back to the original style without Ridley Scott. Thank God. Ridley Scott and his his human flesh skinned. Ugly ass Cenos and ha- wanting to put androids as the forefront and all that garbage. Not, 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 not a fan. Absolutely not a fan of that. Oh. But anywho, uh, we have about twelve minutes. We're going to round this off at the four hour mark. We went ahead and did the trailer. Oh, I have uh, this one commentary. Last here. Oh uh, yes, yes, of course. One last thing, and that's uh, the poster for it. That's a terrible poster. Oh my Very God. horrible. Bad that's... feng shui. Bad feng shui. Mm-hmm. No balance in that photo. No balance. It's a it's a horrible poster, and I wish they would hire someone over at, at uh, Amazon who knows how to make how a fucking poster. Works? Look, I'm not going to do it. You can't hire me. Just because I can do it doesn't mean I'm going to do it. All right? I'm done. Nope, I'm out. And also, I they don't have any snails, so <laughs> they need snails. I don't know, man. That 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 poster. It as somebody who who makes you know, or at least scouts out better thumbnails for Fed for Hire to doctor up. I I just can't. Mm. That that's too noisy for one. It's way too noisy. And it's well, the, not good the, they're balance. trying to, to get through the, how important the caps are, right? Right and, right. and that's what they're trying to draw you in with. And it's just, it looks like they're hitting shit, basically coming from behind. And the toilet just explodes, and that's what you get. Caps and shit. Mm-hmm. Caps and shit. 
But uh, yeah, I think I have another scheduled upload series uh, alongside Avengers Skyrim. So now that I am just now entering the Capital Wasteland in Fallout 3 with my Tony Stark, I'm going to try not to be tempted to metagame and uh, clear out Mothership Zeta first so that I can grease through the rest of the title. Uh, it will be very <laughs> roleplay role play centric. Uh, so that's going to be a thing. Uh, we will also have more reactor side chats talking about particular aspects of Fallout, including factions, uh, historical events. Uh, we may even dedicate a stream to discussing uh, some of the vault -Tec vaults and their sinister social experiments, uh, just how product placement is in Fallout, how, how sinister the Nuka-Cola Corporation is. Don't fuck with the Nuka-Cola uh, Corporation. Uh, uh, Skyrim, Avengers Skyrim. That sounds kinky. Yeah, it does sound kinky. Neener, neener. Hello. Uh, How are you doing? Well, I hello. Hello. Um, but uh, yeah, I believe that we'll be wrapping this bad boy up in nine minutes. And uh, thank you, Snail. You were late, but it's, you know, like the Titanic and Ghostbusters too. Better late than never. So it's <laughs> good to see you. Ranker Steve, thank you for pinch hitting. And uh, this has been a very fun stream. It had a little bit of everything. It had a little matinee. It had a little lore dump. It, uh, you know, sang a few songs at the beginning while we were getting this thing going. Did a little gameplay of Fallout 3. And we reviewed the trailer. It seemed like it was a very meaty, content-filled stream. And I'm particularly happy with the end result. Um, this is why whenever you... whenever This is my advice to new streamers out there. The longer your show goes the more people will be able to assist with it if you start bottoming out. But have confidence in providing a one-man show, even if that doesn't happen. You put it out there, you let people know that you're going to be doing a thing, and if scheduling issues happen or emergencies happen, still do your best to do a great show. And I live I live by that mantra. This ended up being a very great show. Uh, Snail is uh, man's conquest. <laughs> Hey Here Tony, check metal, you prick. Hey Tony, check the private chat. Uh, yeah. I uh, I felt it was in in the vein of Fallout that period. I need mm -hmm. to get that photo. Um, I would use it for my stuff. Mm hmm. Um, I can send it over to. Uh, let's see here. If I can I figure. Do you have Do you have an X snail? I do. I need to find you. I do indeed. Mm hmm. Uh, but do 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 do. Whoops. Can't do uh, Star Wars things, right? Mm -hmm. Lists. I can't figure this hellhole out. Anyways. Have a good one, Dark Helmet. We'll see you on the flip, my friend. And again, uh, do they cock that cock eventually? Well, that depends on how they cock that cock and if they cock it often. You and cocks, dude. That depends. How many cocks are we talking about? One cock, two cock, red cock, blue cock? I don't know. How curious are you? Uh, curiosity <laughs> usually ends with context that I do much, or in this case, content. I am following. Oh, there you go. Got it. <laughs> uh, no, you already you've already let it out of the bag, much like your cock, Kronos. Good job, cock sucker. I knew uh, it. It's in his phone. <laughs> How many times can a man say cock when a man should say shit about cock and cock wood? I don't know. I tried to make it into a tongue twister. How's your anyway, morning going? Pretty hard. It it pretty hard, you know. It's how many how many times have you tried discussing cock into the form of a tongue twister? I don't know. Are we married? Hey Tony, so uh, here's an idea I'm throwing out to you guys in the private chat. I mentioned this in the private <clears throat> chat. If you guys want to, because my wife's not here, she's visiting friends. So I have free time. Um, we can do, since you're probably going to end your show soon, I can set up uh, uh, more conversations and we can go there if you want and talk and do That's up to scale. Uh, usually uh, at 7.30 I go and I hang out with uh, Teague. Oh. Up to you guys. Le Teague. If not, it's coming. If he's doing anything at 7.30... 
uh, where I'm his co-host on uh, Sundays, I got to be over there. But if he's not, then then most definitely. Check with Tim. I'm good. I can set it up. Um, if not, I don't know. Just an idea. Mm-hmm. But uh, this has been a very successful stream. Very very successful, and uh, you know, this this is if this if all my Fallout streams end up being like this one. If all of my fallout streams have, uh, end up being like this one, then I think I'm gonna have a good series in the works. And uh, thank you guys for helping carry it. I, I thought I was gonna have to sing the whole soundtrack to the damn game. <laughs> 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 Which, to be fair, as, as somebody who can carry a note, that's not a, exactly a bad thing. But I already did my matinee after Friday Night Frolics. And I'm saving a matinee for later on in the week. I don't want to just matinee the whole time. Sometimes I do just want to sit around and just talk about shit, you know. And we had a good conversation yesterday with Robert Wright about Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, where we dug into the nitty gritty about that film from beginning to end. It was real fun hanging out with Robert Wright. Uh, So check him out on Rob Wright's Gen X Pop Cultures. But I think it's about time that we go ahead and we do our plugs and seeing as I don't just want to go, hey, plug your show, I do like to hoard commercials for shows, um, which, uh, Steve, you need to update your commercial if you'd like. Um, I usually, whenever I have somebody on here that I have a commercial for, I will play. Oh, the yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. Send that to me uh, through a Wii transfer or something so I can get that updated. But I will play the commercial that I do have on file. Um in just a second and uh, again before we get to the tower after hours uh, segment the tower after hours will be back at 11 o'clock tonight eastern standard where we will be interviewing anti-derivative jill oh that's sexy yes Uh Uh, obviously obviously not road legal as do you have more pictures of that car i want to put that into my death races let me throw a model that but I can't find it. I don't know if yeah, it's. I, mean, uh, I want to 3D model that, and that's not enough. That's not enough information. I want to 3D model that? You need. To I don't know it. if it's AI because look at the text on the license oh, plate. Oh no! God, at least it's kind of sort of like an angular top down, but it's not enough to work with. I don't know where the wheels are positioned in this damn thing. I would venture a guess between uh, the outer and the next engine um, jet engine. But right. as retro, but as retro as that vehicle is, and because there are four thrusters to that jet engine, yeah, I am on the vein that there is a single wheel in the back because you're not going to be able to place a, a, a transaxle and a drivetrain no, under a that kind of wheel wheel all over. I'm just saying that's a massive that's a fuselage with four thrusters. You're not yeah. putting a transaxle and a rear axle on that. That's not happening. That's not. I happening. think if the wheels can turn, uh, the wheels will be able to turn in the. Uh, the wheels would be actually be stationary in the front, and the back wheel might have the steering uh, opportunity. But then again, if it's a rocket car, that thing that this is going to make you roll it. It's going to roll either way if you try turning in it. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, but here, if it just has one wheel in the back, it will it roll. Looks, it looks too bottom heavy to turn while while driving. But it looks like something that will be in Fallout. It does. An executive car. It could be one of the uh, coveted flying cars that the really, really rich people had before the nukes went off. Ah. How fast can you put a video up? Huh? Yeah, you heard me. How fast can you do a video? I just sent you it. Oh. Uh, da, da, it's da, not. Da, you can da, do da. the other one. Uh, well, you sent it to me via this. Let me see if oh, I can. Oh, I should do it. I should do it through email. Yeah, you sent it through uh, text. Uh, email it, but send it through a WeTransfer so I can download it. Uh, I have it in a file where you can actually download it. Oh, you got a Dropbox? Okay. Yeah. I just I just emailed it to you. Okay. I'm already on my inbox. Refreshing the inbox. Order now. Refreshing it again. There it is. All righty. Oh, 
Okie dokie. Downloading now. That's it the is. new that's the new um promo. Okay. Well, is it okay if I do both? Because you know, bashing yeah, on Bud Light. Never, yeah. Bashing See, on Bud I'm Light. I'm on the never, show. I'm on the show. You can do it. Yeah. Bashing on Bud Light never gets old. I know, right? You just you really can't. So let me go over here now. Another reason why I drink very, very slowly when I'm on the air. Is for reasons just like that. It's A, B, C, D, what? Tiny MP4, too, should upload pretty quickly, even on my shitty-ass hotspot here. Yeah? There we are. Magnifico. And Stale Messiah, yes. Anytime that I do a reactor side chat, I like to do it half an hour after I get up. Whether I'm hungover or not, I just I just go and get on the air. Um, all of this, all of the aesthetics for the Fallout, I actually had done last night because uh, after I got off, Robert Wright and I hung out for about an hour as I was getting this all set up. I, I'm kind of like wired to do that. So, alrighty then, we'll put you right there next to the other one. All right. So, is there anything else you want to cover before we? Uh, before we wrap up, and again, I want to no. wish everybody. Uh, I want to wish everybody a happy Easter. Uh, You're looking and, uh, at it, baby. Again, and again, remember the reason for the season. This is about the Savior, the human race. This is about Jesus. This is about the one that conquers life and death. And there is no political figure. There is no uh, puppet emperor. There is no alternative focus that needs to be on the day that celebrates Jesus. Period. Bar none. And with that out of the way, we'll go ahead and run your video and then we'll do your plug, Rinker Steve. You ready? Oh boy. Red button's on the other side. We got the red red button to do. Uh, well, that's not the right one. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, 100% marks, it's though. Not, it's not the actual trailer. I sent the wrong one. It's right. 100% oh, marks. 100% marks. I did not hear a miss. Yeah, All you're right. Marks. Man, All which one did marks. I... I swore I sent you the right one. <laughs> it's this Whoops. one. Yeah, whatever. You can... I'll send this we're gonna one to play, you. We're going to play the other ad, and I'll upload the other ad. But anyway, it, it's obvious that Raker Steve is a crack shot, at least at 50 yards. So uh, with that out yeah. of the way, <laughs> let's go ahead and uh, play the actual ad here. Uh, I think Steve just wanted to flex his ability to shoot something. I, yes, that is exactly what it is. <laughs> hey. Bacon salad. Follow me for recipes. Is it bacon, 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 and more bacon and whatever you have left on your head of the lettuce that didn't go bad? Yeah. That's what it's like to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's play the actual ad and actually get to the plugs here. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. I'm Rancor Steve. I'm the host and creator of Man Around, where a bunch of men talk about manly things. And there, we try to help men become better men. And every once in a while, we have to make decisions. And that is to be better men in life. And I can always assure you that, hey, we all make mistakes, but it's the sensation of being a man. Men being men with men. All righty then. So what have you got coming down the pipeline, sir? Uh, we, I do a show called Manorama and where we try to help nerds, geeks, betas, simps, any type of guy um, to learn life skills of how to be a man. And we try to help that in life skills, of course. And next week, we are this coming week, we're talking about selfishness and why being selfish is actually really bad for you. And Agreed. it's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, 
it's every there's always a new topic that comes up um yeah it's it's a lot of fun i know andy masterson um sometimes you come on the show every once in a while i know um doom scroll was on one episode um so it's people that you have seen on different shows have come on here and yeah it's a lot of fun we talk about manly things uh to get away from pop culture stuff and just talk about the things that um guys and men deal with and yeah we're talking about selfishness this coming week it's gonna be fun well, i also did lego build um mm-hmm. i did a two-day lego build stream and yeah where i build with legos so, with a, yeah with I the vader helmet last night but my friends came over we played cards i got too drunk to where i couldn't articulate speech and i didn't want to bring ah, it's to okay me. i got drunk the first night <laughs> <laughs> but i do i will say this on your show i mentioned this in the chat and uh, i think pj stream earlier um this summer i am going to be doing a pre-recorded show coming out um it's going to be a lot of fun um a lot of practical things it's a lot of it deals with pew pew um so yeah it's it there's with a lot what? of things yeah, my show, my channel is just strictly man stuff. Like, how awesome well, can you at get? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, and this is something that I've always liked about the mission statement behind Manorama, is... Don't be gay? Oh, don't be gay, for one. Uh, for two... <laughs> for two... Uh, <laughs> for two, it's like, uh, the focus is all, like... Right now, the reason why we're having so much stuff happening in our pop culture and why there's so many people complaining about it is that is part of the overall schema of the people that have set that in motion. And the Mm -hmm. thing that Manorama provides is when that shit comes to a head and you need survival skills, that's what that's for. If you need to be able to handle yourself in a situation much like what could be very much martial law or fallout, That's what that show is for. If you need to be able to be self-sufficient, capable in your abilities, and rely on your brothers, that's what that show is for. And and that that is absolutely necessary. Pop culture commentary is always going to be around because that's part of the political scheme of the people that are behind the curtain. Yeah, But don't get a lot of men's health and awareness shows out there, and Manorama sets itself apart as that. So you can go check it out on Rumble, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, Rancor Steve. If you do the search, you can find all that stuff there. We are Mm -hmm. back on YouTube. We're testing out on YouTube now, um, which Rancor Steve. And, yeah, it's all there. It's a lot of fun. Um, Check it out. Yeah, that's all I got to plug. Right on. Uh, Snail, uh, outside of our collaboration with the Fallout Reactor side chats going forward, uh, do you have any projects coming out from your end? I absolutely do not. <laughs> so we could go ahead and skip to the part where you want to show this off. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? Hey, hey. but it, you it's, have it's, zero it's, chance to hit now. Now, if you if you go and you watch Manorama, those percentages will go up. I promise. Yes. So you, so you get a buff from watching Manorama. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. Well, yes. here's the other thing. If you check out, I will say this. There is another plug-in. If you check out Mike Lorber's channel on um, or Comic Relief, Relief Crusade on, on Fridays, I do a segment where um, it's Thoughts on the Throne with Rank or Steve. And so mm-hmm. it's a little plug-in there. Check it out. It's humorous. It's a lot of fun. Um yeah. Mike is an awesome, 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 awesome creator and a very talented man, a very hardworking man. Uh, he, he's always got his neck up in something. Like he's always busy. He's always – the, the idle hands are the devil's hey. play thing. You know, idle hands are the devil's play things. And he's hey, always – You have a 0% chance of failure with that lady. Yeah. Hail, welcome back, Billy, Billy Power Max. Good to see you. We're actually going to be wrapping up. Uh, but uh, I guess my plugs uh, are as follows. Um, I am having an interview of the Tower After Hours with Antiderivative Jill at 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time tonight. That will be simulcasted between YouTube and Rumble. 
In fact, my Rumble show is dedicated to the Tower After Hours specifically, as in I don't upload anything else to my Rumble side of things besides that. And it's just it's much more of a formality. Uh, Susan Dolan asks, Grant or Steve, when's the next time you want to do a movie TV parody with Gary Ambrosia? I'd love to see that on Pop Culture Breakdown. Oh, he still does that. He, he still does. Uh, we are working on something. Mm-hmm. So... We're working on something. I got to get back to Paul Culture Breakdown. I took a break um, mm-hmm. for a lot of different reasons. Nothing bad. No burn, no water on the bridge burning of any bridges or anything. It's just I need mm-hmm. to take a break for for multiple reasons. Um, mostly to save the marriage. Um, but I'll, I, I do want to get back to Paul Culture Breakdown and be on there. Um, but yeah, Gary and I are working on something really cool. It's 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 better than what we've done in a long time. It's pretty and cool. and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop a little nugget of uh, of a teaser uh, since we're closing in on pop culture breakdown. I will not be there this Wednesday, but I will have a little intro video done and sent out to Gary by the end of the night tonight for the uh, movies we love segment. And I can't wait to, because the, the character, I won't spoil the character. Uh, I'm sure that people that are fans of this show have already probably put it together because I talked a little bit as him during the matinee, but I am doing an introductory video as a particular character for the movie we love segment on pop culture breakdown. Now I did the truffle shuffle initially whenever I did one of these little shorts I remember it, that it, it, it had great fanfare, um, but <laughs> this is gonna be—I'm not gonna be shaking my fat ass tub this time around. Uh, but uh, we know, <laughs> damn boo! I know, right? Boo! <laughs> but you know, I—I I, I need to get that done tonight and send to Gary so it can be submitted for review. Um, but uh, with that stated, uh, I believe all of the plugs are accounted for. Uh, depending on which arch villain, if he, if DC is doing an arch villain stream on Monday or Tuesday, since we've ran out of work, I am mostly available for those days to be on the air and to work on YouTube uploads. Uh, did the, if, if DC does an arch villain stream, I will be having a post arch villain stream matinee that will be, uh, running for the duration of a primetime night. Where I, again, I'll be bringing out my motley cast of characters and singing songs and partying and having a few drinks and just doing what I do that I usually do after DC is done. So it'll be right after the Archvillain live stream that if it falls on a Monday or a Tuesday, if it does not fall on either one of those days, it will happen Monday night or Tuesday night um, at 830. So Stay tuned uh, for that. And with that, I believe that we are done with this uh, particular parcel of the Reactor Side chat. This has been very fun. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. And Snail Messiah, uh, what, do you want to make this like a bi-weekly thing where we do this every Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard? Just discussing I get Fallout? it. Yes. We got to do it every week if you want. Well, I can't do every week because there is some Sunday obligations based on who's streaming what. I like to, ah. I like to cross, I like to cross pollinate. I like if like if there's like a guest opportunity on a Sunday, and I'm free, I like to do that. That also gives me time that if I'm working on an upload, I can get that done without having to be on the air all the time. So biweekly, I think is probably the best uh, formula, unless unless you really want to, but that's really going to make my schedule tight. No, I don't want you to get stressed out. Right, right. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and just say uh, on the next uh, episode of Reactor Side Chats Fallout, which will be two weeks from now, it will fall on the uh, Sunday the 10th. Let's hear it. Days the 31st. So actually, no. Sunday the 14th. Uh, we will be discussing power armor technology and the history of the Brotherhood of Steel. Does that sound good to you, uh, Snail? It does, indeed. Excellent, excellent. Because, you know, Nerd. Maxon, Maxon or, or the original Maxon was <laughs> shit. Elder Maxon's a dick. <laughs> so I can't, can't wait to, to, to discuss that. So uh, we'll be doing our homework and making sure that all of our Brotherhood of Steel uh, data is up to snuff. 
and we will convene with the reactor side chats fallout on the 14th and uh, with that uh check out saving star trek at 7 30 p.m eastern standard if he's doing one i'm about ready to give him a call and make sure he's okay and see if he's going to do one and uh, if not, then tune back in on this channel at 11 o'clock for uh, an episode of uh, The Tower After Hours, where we'll be interviewing Antiderivative Jill. So we will see you then. Uh, where is the clip? The outro clip. Da, 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 da. Happy Easter. And happy Easter. And God bless each and every one of you. Yes. And remember the reason for the season. It's this day, this is Easter. the day. Yeah. You just it's, said it's what? a peaster. It's from uh, Tripping the Rift. Oh, my God. I haven't seen Tripping the Rift in a hot minute. But you know what else I haven't seen in a hot minute? This little bad boy. We'll play this clip, and then we'll do the reactor side chat clip, and we'll call it a day. So here we go. Each contestant must successfully deliver all of his eggs to the waiting children. In this, perhaps the most traditional of Easter rituals. Contestants to your marks, and get ready to spread that Easter joy. He yoked all over her. He did. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Keith, that was terrible to 